<clears throat> Wait until 9.01, just because I saw a lot of nine, 9.01s in the chat. What's happening, everyone? Welcome back. It's just me this week. Dan Quip. You're welcome. All right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Dan's back. Oh, I'll kick her off. I already kicked her off, oh, bud. She's live? Yep. Everybody thought we were doing it backwards this week. No, wait until 9.01. Like, that's what I said. Everybody thought we were doing it like you. I said, Dan, quit. You're welcome. We're here without me. It'd be nice. Oh, you guys would be so bored. All right. What are you doing there? Oh, it just went black there for a second. As oh, soon as you touched the camera, I, sh I shocked it. Nice. You good now? All right. I wasn't in frame. I'm too tall. <laughs> too tall for you. All right. What's going on? See, Kerper said he's out. Later. <laughs> See you, dude. Okay. Welcome no, back, everybody. Your Bourbon Junkies live stream. So. It's one degree out. Tonight, we have special guest. What? Is it you catching your breath? I, I ran, dude. I got water. I came back. I'm out of breath. I'm going to take a picture and put it on. Facebook to how far away it is from the hut to your house. I was explaining to everybody the other day that I walk to work every day in the snow. 20 feet. No, oh, 400 yards. So what's up everybody. Yeah. Ricky. It's a large. Good, sir. It's so comfy. Like that's a, that's a small and look how, I mean, look how it's too big. Okay. So we're going to read patron names and then we're going to have Aaron join us. He's waiting right now. So we're actually going to do this right away. Okay. So, Patrons. Dan just have week. a stroke right off the bat. How am I feeling? I'm just out of breath. Like shit. Which is pretty normal, but it's just like more, slightly more shitty. More today, shitty. Yeah. I got to talk like I'm having, or well, I had a stroke. <laughs> the Dan, I showed Dan. It'll never come up on camera, but like the entire corner of my mouth is just one big sore. It is. Because the corner of my mouth got ripped. Yeah. So it's a good, you know. Yeah. Okay. Excited to be here. <laughs> Excited to be here. Happy to see you guys. So, um, new patrons, thank you guys for joining this week. I'm going to rip your guys' names off real quick. I like. I thought you said I'm going to rip your guys' names up right here. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you are. Okay. So, uh, thank you guys for taking care of us over there. Obviously, thank you for joining. We do have a new Lou pick coming very soon, and then we also have a couple other picks in the works. They go to Patreon. That's where they, that's where our picks live, right? So yep. if you want the opportunity one, that's how you get them over there. Just a heads up if anybody's wondering. So and if you are a patron and you haven't seen the video, we we yeah. we documented us doing the new loop pick. Yeah, it just we put it up today. So go watch that. All right, Derek Bradley, Matt Ritliff, Mark Torres, Dan Kelly, Travis Potter, Greg Ball, Jay Patel, Matt Reamer, Kevin Atchley, Justin Lasile, Tyler Sloan, Eric Moreno, Kurt Ebel, Camille, Brent Saunder, Camille. I feel like that's at least 10 awesome women now. That's at least 10. All right. Steve, but Steve edited Chris and Marco, Alden Delani, Logan Strom, Michael Colby, Mikey G, James Reardon, Ted Nelson, Greg Buck, T2K1. I don't know how I got that out like that. John Stoddard, Eric Goodness, William Troutman, Bo Allen, Nathan Herbert, and LJ Decker. Almost. You did have some swordfish oil. Like he did pretty well today. I almost said Nathan Herpes and I saved it. Bid. Mid you don't have to double click that. I didn't intentionally double click the fingers. Okay, no. I got trigger finger on me. All right. So thank you guys for joining over there. So obviously tonight we're going to be hanging out pronunciation on point. See everybody knows. All right, I'm going to go through a couple those super chats okay. and then I'm going to say, we're probably not going to do a lot of reading with super chats right now, just because we're going to be hanging out with, Oh, did you watch the stream last week and saw everybody complain? You guys are complaining. Yeah, yeah. But you didn't say that. I shouldn't have to Chris Bradley with the super stick. We got Jay Patel. Hey, we just read your name. Hey, long time viewer, first time chatter, new patron. Not Thank you, bad. sir. You guys got me through some new bourbon issues in 2020. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for being here. Steve Roland, hug hey. Sean. I appreciate oh, you, man. Sean, hey, Sean's not a hugger. You know I'm a hugger. <laughs> Don Thompson, even guys, late at the late, the game. Oh, where's that? That was at least two. Don't short that one. Evening, guys. Let the games begin. Team Stan, <laughs> Team Sean. Thank you, Don, for the super chat, buddy. Okay. I'm going to reset yours to zero. Yeah, I haven't done I'm that. I'm at two. Yeah, I'm good. Not looking good for me tonight. <clears throat> okay, so tonight we're going to hang out. Obviously, Aaron from Smoke Wagon. Make a you damn, know why you're here. Make a damn good whiskey. Yeah, everybody knows. Everybody saw the thumbnail. Can I be honest? I'm going to bring him in so we can talk about that picture because I'm, I'm in love with it. All right. Hey, new subscriber, Vince. Thanks for being here, buddy. Appreciate All right. You. 
Aaron, can you hear us? Oh, so on, man. Mean it. Uh oh. Aaron, you're muted. Are we muted? Are we muted? Nope. No, click him down here. There you go. Hello. Hey, hey nope. we got to figure it figured out. I, it was me. I muted it. I was that good shit. <laughs> I was say, I didn't click anything. That's all right. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? Uh, besides starting off with the uh, microphone muted very well. Thank you. Hey. How you guys doing? Good. good. We good, all, good. we often don't I'm even start, start at the right a nice time. backdrop. I keep doing these lives and streams, and I just got I don't have anything cool behind me ever. Very sad. Just I mean, you have like a bunch of barrels of whiskey somewhere. You yeah. know what I mean? It feels like. <laughs> <laughs> just bring some home. Bring a few yeah. racks home. Yeah. All you gotta do is just stack. Just like stack them up. Yeah. Six barrels. Yeah. You just, all you gotta do is fill the frame, right? It doesn't have to be actually be that many. It just looks like a lot. So. Mm -hmm. well, okay. I'll do the little corner of my house. I'll do that. Yeah. Nice tight zoom. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Okay. So obviously, everybody in chat, I'm sure, is aware, but I don't actually. What? What's your? Okay. I'm gonna. I gonna make up a title. The uh, badass from Smoke yeah. Wagon. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I mean, it's weird, you know, because I, I do distill the vodka but you know i mean and i do blending but i think to be a master distiller or a master blender you you're supposed to have certification i i don't have any <laughs> i don't know what the fuck i'm doing i just like throwing shit around until I, it tastes good you know so uh, see the thing is is I, it, you don't have to claim to know what you're doing as long as as long as the product it, turns out, out yeah, yeah. I, I get, yeah. I mean, I guess it helps that there's, you know, there's only two of us with no investors or anything. So, you know, you get to do whatever the fuck you want. I think that's the secret to our success. That's awesome. Well, that's and, and cool. fortunately, when I think something tastes good, other people think it tastes good. Yeah, that helps. I mean, it, it's at least you know, it seems that way. Now, if if uh, It'd be tragic to be in reverse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, great. I don't. Best, <laughs> best shit I don't I think I'd be here. <laughs> oh um alex said that uh there's no certification for master blender either oh really so yeah oh, and cool. uh alec makes cigars sometimes so mm. Mm. yeah sometimes mm. um i can hear him yelling in florida right now <laughs> well then just refer to me as four-time double gold award-winning master blender aaron chepnick that i like that that sounds good there you go rolls off the tongue it does <laughs> It's almost right. like I rehearsed it. It's almost like so, I've been thinking about that. So, um, I found you because I watch your Instagram a lot, and I thought to myself, "This man is in a distillery, pouring barrels out, getting wild, blending yeah. them together, and drinking whiskey." And I'm like, yeah. and "This is the greatest shit I've ever seen in my life." It's pretty it fucking is. amazing. I don't understand why other suppliers make it seem like they're fucking gonna shovel coal or something you know <laughs> well that's what so out of i i think i've commented this on instagram posts before but one of the things that a lot of people in whiskey know is that there are bottles on a shelf and they can buy them and they can drink them and then mm -hmm. often they'll know the name behind it, like some name at some distillery right yeah so you right. have harlan or you have jackie or you have eddie or whatever the name is yep. but none of and i'm not to like discredit any of them but none of them show the process of them putting a blend together like you blending uncut unfiltered right, right. so one of the things that one of my favorite things and one of the things I, th I think the reason it works is because watching somebody blend something together so that when you buy that batch or that bottle or you drink it or taste it or whatever the, whatever happened you're like Oh, well, I remember watching him say, it's kind of like this. I tasted a couple days ago. It's a little young or something like that right. or whatever, or it's too proofy or what we got to bring it down, whatever it is. And then you go, okay, now you can kind of follow along. And that's way more interesting. Than yeah. Me. You get knowledge out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if, you know, it's like, they think it's a big secret or, or, or what the reasoning behind it is, or, you know, I, who knows? I, I, I mean, I do know that like, I remember when uh, we used to be able to, you know, we were very small and, and I would have uh, bourbon groups come to do barrel picks, you know, back when we used yeah. to be able to do barrel picks and everything. And I would tell everybody about the process and like oak and how, why all the single barrels are different and all these different, 
you know, the balance between like, you know, lipid esters and um, tannins and, every, and everything. And, uh, you know, the, the one of the number one comments was, I just realized I've been lied to at every single tour I've ever gone on because <laughs> that's nothing like what they they told us, you know. And I, and maybe it's because, who knows? You know, maybe it's like, hey, everybody can, you know, everybody's doing the same. There's very few, you know, mash bills. I mean, that's the thing when people are like, oh, are you going to do it, distill it yourself? It's like, no. Um, I, it's very easy for me now. You know, I call, make a phone call and say, hey, I would like to do 400 barrels this month. And I don't have to do anything. I don't have to right. buy new equipment. I don't have to find new storage space. I don't have to do shit. And yeah. if I was doing it myself, oh, well, I like 36% rye, 35% rye. So I guess I'll distill my own 35% right. rye, like, so I can say I did it. And like, what's the fucking point, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so like, so yeah, you just, I don't know what anybody's motivation is. I mean, there's, you know, the back label, you know, the, the description on back label, the industry term is puffery. That's your puffery. So that gives you an idea of, you know, what, what's going on in this industry. Well, one of the things that, see, this is the thing I, I take like the, where the whiskey came from out of it often, because reason being for me, at least is somebody made the whiskey, no matter where you're getting the whiskey from, right? The whiskey's already there. Um, yes. Most products that we drink as like a community are blended. Most of them. Yeah. And nobody's showing the process. So Buffalo trace is obviously very blended and, and humongous, right? Yeah. Right. And that product is, is obviously blended now to fit a profile. Well, yeah, cause they only have two bourbon mash bills. Right. With, with all those different expressions, you know, and so, yeah. Right. And so it's like with the Buffalo tracing, what I, I think it would be cool at one time to be like, cause they're blending tons of barrels in Let's to make that profile, batch. right? Show yeah. me start right. to finish yeah. how you guys did that. That's where I want to know, like, you're going to walk over and be like, oh, I think maybe like this batch of barrels over here would actually balance this back out to the profile we're trying to hit. Mm -hmm. And right. like none of these distilleries, now I know it takes time to, to for them to walk around and it would take time for them to make the content, but it would be really cool content. I think, I mean, people consume your content for that reason because it's cool to see the oh, blending yeah. process. That's how you're getting that finished product. So. Yeah. Yeah, and it's fun, you know, and it's like, the, the you know, I'm having fun doing it, you know, and it's not right. overly produced. Like, I get offers from people like, oh, I'd love to come film your Instagram videos, or I'd love to take pictures for your Instagram. And I was like, it's kind of like the reason that people like the Instagram is because it's real. Everything's yeah. real, you know, like even when I, when I first started doing the pictures out by the pool, I'd be like, yeah, sorry, I got fingerprints on, on my <laughs> glass. Here's a, you know, people are like, Oh, you're actually drinking your old stuff. That's amazing. You know, right. it's not like a bunch of models right. and, and some photo shoot. Yeah. And, um, and so, uh, you know, and it, it's a lot of it, you know, it's just trying to figure it out. Um, and a lot of it is like, everybody's doing this and I don't like that. So, right. uh, and especially, you know, coming from the retail end of things and being lied to by, you know, reps and all these things like just telling me bullshit and so i just was you know i don't know i just um as a, as a retailer and a consumer i was like oh god i'm so sick of that shit like even when i first started you know everybody was like oh you need a story you gotta have a story i was like what's my story you know and I, I was like freaking <laughs> out like i don't have a story I make whiskey? <laughs> yeah oh you're, you're, or he's like, are you trying to do something like that's that's how they did it during Prohibition? Did your grandfather die and leave you the recipe <laughs> in the hidden I mean, box like in the in the dresser, you know, or like in the shoe? And so, uh, you know, and and so it, it was sort of unique because everybody at the time was like trying to resurrect stuff, and just by accident, you know. Um, I discovered blending vintages together and I was like, holy shit, this is fucking, this tastes really fucking good. And, uh, and you know, it's something I've talked about before, but they're like, Oh, you need to have a age statement or you got to do this. So I was like, well, well this tastes different than right. anything I've had before. And I prefer the taste of it. 
And w- I don't understand what the point is of, of doing anything other than this. We're just going to be another lying brand just doing the, the same shit. And then, the you know, the cool thing, too, as, as it evolved with since we do, you know, uh, contract MGB to lay down all our distillate for us, it really is a proprietary flavor, um, especially with for how long we've been doing it with them and the age stuff we bought. There, I have so many different warehouse locations and vintages and things like that. You know, there, there was a brief period there where I, when we blew up and I kind of stopped talking about uh, the floors and everything going into uncut. But now it's like, fucking try to match it. You know, <laughs> good, good fucking luck. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's like, the, the last ones we did had seven or eight different floor and vintage combinations. And so, you know, have fun. It's fucking hard, you know. Um, and, and it's all, and they're all uh everything's different you know i think uh, mgp uses four or five different cooperages so the wood's all different and uh but yeah i all don't right, even know yeah. we just buy like eight barrels of whiskey okay. we get them in the hut here okay we just set up yeah. a camera sure just get yep. fucking wild with it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i don't know i don't know if we can monetize that but yeah sure uh, yeah um oh, there'll be a point where yeah. we don't care <laughs> did you get freaky yeah the, not, maybe um, not on this platform. So. Yeah. <laughs> that goes to the only thing. Yeah, there's lots of other ones though. Yeah. Um are you drinking right now? I'm not. I haven't had dinner yet. Oh, okay. I just, okay. I just got back a little while ago from uh, the okay. story. I'm Sean's drinking Desert Jewel. Seemed appropriate. How, how do you like it? Uh I like this one a lot. What well, we only have two. We have a small batch and Desert no, Jewel. we have the we have a store pick. Up oh, there. a store pick up there. And then we oh, have no the, one cut Desert Jewel. No, so because we're up in Michigan, so unfortunately none of it's up here. So right. this was we don't, we don't have a name on this. That got sent early then. Yeah, somebody sent us this Desert Jewel, and then the glass guy that we work with actually went and did a barrel pick over there, like a quite what two years ago. I don't know, it was a while ago. Um, his name's Ben. It's barrel raised. He makes yeah, glassware and stuff on. He's like a, he's all he's on Instagram under Barrel Rays, but yeah. yeah, he went. I wonder what I don't oh know God. what store it says on the I'm pick. Gonna get wild man, some of those, some of those barrel picks back in the day. I was like, you guys want some saltines? You want spit cups? You know, right? Like, no, we're cool. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. like people falling over, you know. So yeah. it's got it's got like a they he oh. ended up engraving like a wood thing that says Josephine on it. Yeah, that's from uh they, they have a new owner now. That's in Arizona. Um, okay, I can't remember no, the name. Liquor there. Express. Liquor Express. That's right. Yep. So that's what we he went and did that, and him and I were talking about it. And I'm like, hey, if you can get one up here, like we gladly, you know, <laughs> pay you to send it up here and deliver here. Yeah, and so he sent that one up. So those are the two we have just because they aren't in Michigan and we didn't travel like almost at all last year due to obviously all the shit. So. Not at all. Yeah. Um, Somebody did super chat and say, please ask when you guys are going to start. Was it tours? Miguel. Yeah. Let's see. You'd have to go to the activity. It said, can you ask? Nope, that's not it. <laughs> down, I mean, we down, can ask that one, but that wasn't it. That's what the fuck was that one? Can you no, no, yeah. Uh, so okay, I'll ask his. Bo Tillman said, Can you ask Aaron where my best chance of finding uncut unfiltered in Vegas is? Uh total wine, but they usually sell it pretty fast. Like some maybe some of the smaller stores, like liquor lineup or Corey's or uh top shelf liquors, Roy's, um uh What's uh, oh man, Liquor World, uh, Liquor World, the like the rainbow location of Liquor World, they always seem to have a ton. Um, yeah, so, um, the other question was something along the lines of, um, when will you be doing tours? When will you be doing yeah, distillery tour type situation? Uh, it'll have to be when we move, and so okay. I'll be able to talk about that space in detail tomorrow, but that should be August or September. The space right now is just too small. We weren't approved for a, um, uh, what do you call it, a tasting room license. Okay. Um, so we can't, we just can't do shit there. I see. And, but, but, uh, well, I don't even know if I can do, yeah. But the the first stage will have a tasting room, which is cool. But the second stage will have an actual bar. 
And because the tasting room, there's all these rules and regulations like, hey, here's your thimble. But a room <laughs> in a bar, it's like, get the fuck out of here. You do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine you now Vegas? behind the bar with a barrel of whiskey and you're just dunking it in. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know if we could do that because uh, everything has to be, you know, it's all that that is still regulated by the federal government as right, far right. as uh but you know, whatever, who knows? There's strippers and <laughs> cigars and shooting guns. Let's see what happens. There you go. It sounds like Vegas to me. <laughs> We're in. <laughs> well, uh, well you let us know when that's open, we'll be there. Um so the Desert Jewel, it's funny because that store pick was the first one I've ever of smoke wagon products I've ever had. Mm-hmm. And then I had Desert Jewel. And when I had right. Desert Jewel, I was like, holy shit. Because, so we have a distillery up in Michigan called Valentine. And so, oh, oh yeah. Um, Valentine sourced a lot of, uh, like, kind of older MGP. Right. And then they were putting out different color labels, right? That were basically like single barrels or blends of MGP and stuff like that. And uh, Justin, the distiller down there, does an incredible job, job blending, right? And he's a cool guy. And he's awesome, dude. And so um, we had had that stuff. And then I had Desert Jewel, and I'm like, holy shit, dude. Like, Wild difference. We, yeah, like it's Desert Jewel. I'm in. Lo- I'm madly in love with Desert Jewel. We it, nursed the you, shit so, out of the bottle. So have you, you've never had Uncut Unfiltered? So I've had it oh, one you, time because we had a sample had of it. it. Or Klein has one. That's why. Our buddy yeah. Klein has one. Um, so we, uh, we've had it one. I've had one batch one time. I've tasted it. So I haven't, we haven't had some, any of the other expressions. I know that obviously the other ones exist, small batch. And, and I thought we had a small batch. And entry level is straight. Right. Um, but the, un, that's, I was talking to Alec today and he's like, dude, I got a, he's like, I got an uncut and filtered. I'm like, you got one. Are there more? Were they yeah. around retail? <laughs> <laughs> they usually are. I, I think Georgia is the only place I've heard of them being, super inflated but hopefully as we get more out that'll change you know right well i mean it's not great for the consumer but it's kind of it's got to be like a pat on the back when your stuff gets marked up right because in a way because you're like i'm I'm doing a good enough job that people want it it. yeah there's a high demand right right well i mean yeah it stresses me out you know because when when there's so much hype right you know, can all come to an end, and and uh, and so you, you, you try to equalize it. I mean, right. the thing is, it's like there is hype, but it, but it's also everything's real. You know, right. we're selling out of, of straight bourbon, and people are and people are coming back for more. I mean, that's not hype generate. Same right. same with small batch with the price point, and even uncut unfiltered. You know, a lot. Of, it's not like the the barrel pick or the rare and limited, where people are like, ah, you look at my collection. Like rare and limited is like shit. I drank that bottle in four right. yeah. days. Where I gotta find some more, you know. Right. So, so that's cool. That's real, and that that's what I want, you know, because I, I want to be doing this for a long time, and and I don't have a, an exit strategy. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> well, I, I mean, look, a lot of people have exit strategies. That's the right. Thing. Yeah, go in, I like that. Shit as much out as you can without right. worrying about account support or longevity, and just have those case numbers. And and get bought out, you know. Right, I think right. that's, that's a dream true. for um, a, a lot of people, especially hot, right now. Yeah. Bur- bourbon's hot, you know. Yeah. And uh, you know, I started way before bourbon was hot. You know, um, I mean, when we first started, it was it was before you know, fucking people were still buying premium vodka and doing VIP service and all that shit. I mean, I remember my bars; I could get anything. We, you know. We had all the pappies. We had all the antique collection. I mean, shit, I even had a that first year of cel- Michter's celebration. It was a mistake. The bar manager thought it was $250 for the bottle, not $2,500. But, Holy shit. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. So, so shit. you know, I mean, bourbon was not like it is now. And, um, right. yeah, so when I say I have no exit strategy, because usually people do. Right. Um, well, like you said, something that happened. So hi, I'm I'm a big High West fan, right? Right. And High West sold to Constellation, I think, like yep. two yeah. years ago or last year. I don't remember when, but um, and one of the things, one of the reasons that I liked High West so much is because I liked, I thought 
I, I appreciated how they were blending their products because a lot were, of their yeah, stuff they were was in blended, the right? forefront of yeah. what they were doing with blended whiskey, really. For I mean, a little it was while. Crazy. In I love Midwinter well, Nights. It's trend. a little different. Yeah. I mean, it was a little different. They were kind of getting stuff and figuring out what to do with it. I mean, right. I've always mm -hmm. been laying juice down. Sure. With, with the, uh, but yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah. They got bought out. I mean, I don't even, I don't even know what they're doing now because you used to see it everywhere. I don't even think we have it in, in my last bar anymore. Nobody orders it anymore. Well, they're, they're, so they, they, they keep shutting down lines, which is the yeah. weird part because so high West has their own distillate, right? And they, like you just right. said, they were sourcing Barton MGP and, and they had several different sources and we're blending it together. And now I don't know that they're not sourcing MGP and Barton, but they do, they they're blending their own distillate into their products now. Right. And unfortunately what that obviously does is it starts changing their products, like their main lines a lot. Right. Yeah. So, um, Midwinter Nights Rain was the big one where they started introducing their own distillate. And the first year they introduced their own distillate, it was like, holy shit, this isn't anywhere near Little like the different. same product. <laughs> Which, you know, it's not always a bad thing, but it if you don't know or you didn't expect it, then it's just a whole thing. But yeah. what worries me when people do get bought out that you do like is like, so are the blenders leaving? The master blender wet, left High West like yeah. a year or two right. ago. So it, one of the things that comes with those big buyouts, especially when you're talking like Constellation and Stoli and, and whoever, Sazerac, whoever, yeah. Employee retention. Diageo is, yeah. is like, well, that master distiller was really attached to that being like that homegrown distillery, mm -hmm. right? And right. now they're gone. And then, and that's who I appreciate. Now they're a giant it. corporation and they don't give a fuck yeah. anymore. And so that's It's not what, even so much not giving a fuck. It's just, you know, the, the amount of committees and boards. and Yeah, they get handcuffed. Yeah, and like I remember talking to um, someone who used to work at Diageo, and he was pretty high up in Diageo, you know. He was saying that they spend like a, they go crazy buying brands, right? And they spend like right. a billion dollars buying brands, and they go, "This is fucking ridiculous. Let's just create our own." And two years go by, and they nothing can get nothing gets done. Because right. of all the red tape and the, the you know the corporate structure and everything, and then they're like, oh, I guess we'll go you know buy some more brands again. Right. Um, I I mean, look, there's two reasons why I don't want to get bought up. One, I, I can't, I can't. There's no way I could work under a corporate umbrella of like someone telling me what to do or say. I mean, everything I do is by gut instinct. There's sure. no rationale half most of the time. <laughs> I, I can't explain it. I mean, when we did the straight bourbon, the, those six, you know, now it's more than 600. Uh, now it's not just four year on the, on the top floor, but I was obsessed with that. You know, fortunately my business partner, Jonathan, he was like, why do you want to do this? And I was like, I don't know. We just got to put these <laughs> barrels on this floor. Cause we, it need seems right. We, it just feels right. I, you know, and, um, and it, it with everything going on, uh, you know, I, I do see, and uh, so now it's established, and I think there's going to come a reckoning because the market doesn't make sense with all these fucking high end products that that are being, um, you know, just sold to collectors and things like that, where people aren't aren't drinking them, they're just poor, you're just right. collecting things in mass, you know. Yeah. And yeah. These are consumables. It's right. not, and so they go bad. Or, I mean, I know there's dusty bottles and everything that people talk about, but, um, yeah, so, so I couldn't have people like, or the Instagram, I mean, could you imagine a corporation taking over Instagram, Right. how much it would change? Yeah. And, um, yeah, fuck that. And then being bought out uh, completely, well, then what am I doing with my life? Just <laughs> like, a, you know, I mean. Like seriously, like people will be like, "Oh my God, you would get so much money." Right. Well, if we do this right, there was going to be plenty of money, sure, and yeah. I get to work and and be the guy from Smoke Wagon, which I yeah. like. I enjoy it. I like having something to show for myself. I don't want to be like some rich guy. We're like, "What do you do?" Oh, I don't do anything now, but I <laughs> still do start this. Up. Yeah, and <laughs> now I'm just some fucking rich asshole. You turn into the Dan Bilzerian of of a whiskey at that point, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm going to prison. Yeah, so, and it's fun. I love it, and uh, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't love it for another tool because it gets easier. You know, the more money there is, sure. Yeah, I think it's different too because, like, I I don't 
I'm not. A, I mean, I know this whole all started off as like a conversation about like getting bought out and all these things, but um, I I like working, and so in the beginning I was doing all the work, and it, I was okay with it. I mean, towards the end I was like, you know, I was getting older now. <laughs> it's like it's been ten fucking years, and so <laughs> it's now it's like fun. I come in, I I fucking do a blend. I come back and try the tank, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm on the phone a lot and, and dealing with distributors and all this other shit, but at least I'm not putting, uh, you know, bottles in a fucking storage container when it's 115 degrees or, or like bottling myself or doing this, uh, you know, physical labor that I did for a long time, but now, and so I, I don't see the re it just gets more and more fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, now it's just like all the good, with none of the none of the bad, it's you're getting to time. reap the benefits of all the the work you put in, you know, in the the first ten years. Now, yeah, yeah. Now, now you just get to go in and be that guy from Smoke Wagon and <laughs> yeah. shit on Instagram and have fun. <laughs> shit, sometimes they bring the shit to my house, you know, like, oh, can you come in? Like, oh, I can't. I've got conference calls today with these guys, and and they'll like show up with my skin. <laughs> <laughs> all the samples, you know, it's only ten minutes away. It, it, um, so yeah, it's cool. It's fun, you know. Um, and how many states do you guys distribute to right now? Like a lot of people have been asking if you distribute. We're to only their state in eleven. Okay, we're only in eleven. Um, and it's funny because it's so hard to get it, but I don't think people understand. Yeah, and when I mean get it, it's, it's so hard to find the product, but I don't think people understand the volume we're doing. Yeah. It's kind of insane what we're doing in the 11 states. And we're sort of maxed out in our small space. Yeah. Um, I just made some changes. And so I think we're going to be able to, you know, kind of get out like 10% more uh, to get us into August when we can move and have an automated bottling line and all that stuff. But uh, yeah. what we're doing in 11 markets out of that tiny little fucking space is insane. It's crazy. I mean, we're probably, you know, we're doing like 60,000 cases. Six packs, you know, five liters, not not twelve packs. So it gives you an idea. High West was national, and they're doing fifty thousand six packs when they sold, and we're we're doing sixty thousand eleven markets, and it's about I don't know, maybe sixty percent of what we could be doing in just those eleven markets if sure, I could get yeah. more juice out the door. Right. And so people are like, "What are you gonna be in Florida?" I'm like, man, Florida is fucking huge. Florida <laughs> is like, I can't go to Florida right now. We'll get you like what a pal, a mixed palate, and uh, you know, right. everybody, no one. That's not enough. And then the states I'm in, um, I was just having this conversation with someone. You know, every I feel like your reputation, everything comes from your from your you know the general philosophy of, of how you're doing things, and so. What what's better to tell a state, hey, I'm not ready because I want to take care of the where I am. Right. I think people respect that because it's just okay when when I do go there, you know, I'm not fucking around. Yeah. And um, or do you just like, oh yeah, let's do it and, and see what happens. And then all the states I'm in, they're like, we're not even getting how much we fucking need. And you yeah. went into another state. Like fuck you, you know. Right. I don't want anybody saying fuck you because it's very happy. It's very easy. Everything can can change, you know. And um, and so you just you gotta. You don't want anybody saying fuck you, right? Well, <laughs> you know. I, I, the last time I talked to Justin from Valentine, we were talking about the same thing with just yep. their red, like their um, I they, wouldn't their their red label and orange label, which is their standard bourbon, their standard rye. Right. Right. So. Yeah. They were talking about which is what they make the most of, right? And we were talking about it, and it's like, listen, we have a ton of people because we like that product and mm -hmm. we talk about it a lot. Right. It's like we have so many people asking, like, hey, can I get it in Maine? Can I get it in Florida? Can I get it in Texas? Wherever. And Justin's like, yeah. listen, and he's like, holy shit. We, right. And he's like, we <laughs> just finally are making enough to completely satisfy Michigan, and some of it stay on shelves for a little while, right? Yeah, right. He's like, so. If it stays on shelves for a little while, then you can count on being able to go to the store and get a new one every once in a while when you need yeah, it, right? right? And he's like, so he's like, I think they're in like four or five states or something like yeah. that. But he's like, and we're gonna tr we're getting with distributors to push out, but we have to satisfy, like you just said, those states because otherwise we look like fucking assholes. Yeah, like a hundred percent. And he goes, and 
we're not trying to be assholes and we're not trying to like it's not like a get rich quick scheme it's yeah. like let's try to get everybody that wants to consume our whiskey our whiskey yeah that shit's four years old or four to six i guess yeah. at this point i can't flip a switch and just make more and right. send right. out more i don't i don't know what you want me to do but i can't believe you yeah. guys pump that much out with that's a lot of there, you said it was there there are two of you you said no uh the two owners oh okay okay yeah no no okay. uh they die got, uh let's see well, there's Lindsay. we just hired someone to help Lindsay. uh so she does like the work of five fucking people i mean she deals with all the purchasing all the distributors um fucking the retail it's crazy and then so we've got the warehouse manager and uh and then three guys on the line at any time and then the weekends were kind of like more of a skeleton crew but now we're gonna have full staff on the weekends and then the the main thing that slows us down is uh uncut unfiltered now that has the batch stickers um you know hopefully i'm getting a printer that prints you know prints on those but okay. uh you know that we just got to get so and then rare and limited i want to do a lot of rare and limited so it's not so rare so that batch is rare and limited but right. as a whole as a product it's not so if these asshole retailers are charging like fucking a thousand dollars all of a sudden there's going to be like 20 of them on the shelf and <laughs> yeah it's like oh hey fuck maybe we should lower our prices and sell these fucking things um, cause it was never supposed to be like this, th the whole point of it, when I did it, it was like, there was never a specific release date. It was just a way for me to do something cool and get it out there. And I just called it rare and limited cause experimental was it's not experimental. It's not like I'm trying new right. mash bills or new mm -hmm. finishes or anything. It's just variations of what we're already doing. Right, and I was so sick of people asking me if there was any more Desert Jewel. I was like, it says it's, it's limited on the back label. I was like, the next one, it's going on the Ooh. fucking front label. Right, <laughs> no, it's limited. It's gone. This is how much there was. There's none left. Don't. <laughs> kind That's of a not a bad problem to have, though. So, Davlar says seven forty in under two hundred. Like smash. Yeah, hey. What are you guys doing? There's with your 740 life? in here, and 200 of you were not super lazy, right? So let's make it like <laughs> five or 600. Um, so one of the uh, one That's of the really things good. I heard that I appreciated you saying is, at one point in time, you're gonna have to correct me because I'm gonna fuck it up. I'm 100 sure. Oh, yeah. but, you're good at like 90 percent though. I'm I'm yeah, confident in you. You said, and I this is where I'm gonna fuck it up. It was either the small batch or the regular bourbon that you said that you prefer and made it in your head with like to drink with an ice cube in it or something along those lines small batch yeah yeah and yeah. when you said that i'm like okay one of my biggest pet peeves in the world is when you go to a distillery's website or that's on the back of a bottle or <laughs> it comes with a media sample and it's like hey you can drink this whiskey neat or with an ice cube or in a cocktail or smoked or cold or hot or whatever and i'm like why didn't you just write please drink, drink our it. whiskey right and then when you get yeah. on you're like listen I like made this one in mine. I throw an ice cube in here, and that was the thought process, right? And you were fucking cloudy freezer ice, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it like, was like <laughs> specificity in like the going out and just being like, no, no, fuck it. This was the mind, the mindset, the mindset to all whiskey is just drink it. Mm -hmm. Like we don't yeah. have to explain that part, right? But when you're yeah. making something and you go, hey, I made this with this in mind, yeah. So you keep it in mind too. Just try it, right? Give it a shot, whatever. Yeah. You don't have to, but yeah. that's how I designed it. When so. you said that, I was like, dude, this is fucking it right here. Like, yeah, uh, I mean, because that... it's fucking, it's 115. Well, first of all, it started uh, when I was in the bars because. We don't have that issue. Uh, yeah. When I was in the bars and I was going out all the time, you know, it's like, yeah, uh, I didn't want to drink. I want to make it stuff last a little longer, sure. you know, mm -hmm. social, got to drive home. I don't want to get fucking wasted. Um, and, uh, and I just felt like everything got too watery uh, on ice. And then also in the summertime, you know, yeah, whatever you, if you're not drinking on the rocks, you're just drinking hot heat, you know, <laughs> under, yeah. under 13 degrees and 5% humidity. That shit's evaporating in your face. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna, you're like, Good barrel proof weather. Yeah. Well, yeah. That like come summer, we're not, we don't have a lot of Canadian whiskey we like. And come summer, it's like, dude, this Canadian whiskey was nice. Like, yeah, it's super oh, it's chill. Light it's, and delicate. Yeah, there's, it's not in your face. 
we don't have the low we have like high temperature high humidity here in michigan yeah and it's yeah. like dude, I'm it's not also drinking. one degree out it's right probably now. negative right, right now. now yeah but i'm like i'm not drinking side junior right now i'm not doing it yeah. like i'm just not yeah, you know I, I, I don't drink uncut at all in the summertime yeah you know well isn't it always summertime basically for you <laughs> no well, compared <laughs> to you how you're you yes I mean, but you know, it gets like, you know, I don't know. It's probably in the forties tonight, you know, in the summer, it'll be a hundred at night. It'll be a hundred at midnight in July. That's wild. We got 10 That's inches yeah. of snow last night. Yeah, right. <laughs> Eight cars got stuck in Sean's driveway. This that morning. is true. I can, go yep. fi- I can go to the snow. It's 45 minutes away. Just drive up the mountain there. And yeah. I'll be, I'll be 8,000 feet in no time. Yeah. I think big bear got like, it was measured in like feet per hour. Almost. Oh <laughs> it was a lot. At Big oh. Bear, yeah, because they don't usually get a lot of snow up there. Yep. That's so I don't, te- it's snowing in Texas right now and shit too. Weather's no. wild. Um, who was it? Carter Mayfield said, What is the backstory on rare and limited? I just I just told the backstory on <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Well, I wanted you to say that. Well, I'll tell you though, I will tell you specifically batch number one was the uh that was like the catalyst. Um so it's funny, you know, because people are like, when, when the hype started with Randall Limbaugh, like, no, it's just barrels and retailers didn't want. Yeah. And I was like, no, those are barrels that I didn't offer to retailers. Guess what else are barrels I didn't offer to retailers? Every single fucking old barrel and every goddamn small batch or uncut, unfiltered, there's been like hundreds of them. Right. You know, it's not like, oh, these are, but anyhow, um, because at that time, I would say, almost every fifth floor eight year I thought was exceptional. And there was these um, 11 that I did not think were exceptional and almost none of the fourth floor eight years that I feel were exceptional. So I was almost exclusively using fourth floor eight years for blending. Okay. Uh, And so I put everything in its own tank, nothing's pre batch. So whether we're doing small batch or uncut or whatever, when I when we batch something, we pull out of each individual tank that has mm-hmm. uh, a barrel dump of that floor and vintage. Nothing's nothing's mixed. Um, and uh, so I tried it. I was like, oh, I wonder how these taste together. And I was like, holy shit, these are amazing. <laughs> I can't fucking blend these. And I was like, I, I got to figure out a way to, to do it. And I was like, you know, there's other things I want to do. Like the the one I just did the the uh, the warehouse C elevators fixed batch, I want to do one that where I didn't have to worry about price, you know, because I try to keep uncut fairly reasonably priced, and I just want to do it however I want it. So I used like a ton, like a bunch of nine year, this these six year barrels that had huge proof gallon loss. But anyhow, the point is, I figured I'd just get these bottles because it takes forever. If I was to come up with like, oh, I like this, let's do a new expression with a different color wax and a different label, five fucking months, you know? Right. So I just wanted to have a bunch of bottles on hand and a bunch of those neck hanging coins. So when I make something, we can just write on the label, send the coin to the engraver and get right. that shit out the door, you know, just get it out. That way there's no... Uh, like I was saying earlier, no specific release date. It's not like, oh my god, it's December. Yeah, it's fucking time <laughs> to go hunting for <laughs> rare and limited, and let everybody go out there at once and try to find this shit. Uh, you know, right. uh, of course, to finally get cola approval from the federal fucking government, and you know, it's December. <laughs> you know, the time of year when everything comes out. You know, there's batch number one in the lotteries with. With everything else, which right. is yeah. not the plan, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it was just supposed to be a way to to get where I could have some um, ability to uh, uh, you know be, be creative and especially right. you know small batch, small batch is a hundred proof, pretty pretty reasonable price point. So I I would like to be able to do that now. That was sort of how the special batch, small batch batch was, which I never released to market because I know what it'll sell for now. And it's not, that should not retail for much more than a regular small batch, you know, which is like $50, $55. And it's going to retail for like $85, $90. And right. uh, 
I I have a problem with I so I just gave it away. You know, I was like, fuck it. Mm -hmm. if, if everybody's going to overcharge for shit, I'm just going to give this away. Right. Because that was the whole point of this was to have fun and be creative. And so here's something cool. Here you go, everybody. I'm giving it away by the six pack. You know, don't sell it. I was I Please. was I was so in on that giveaway, and I was so bummed when I didn't win. Uh, I feel like that's the 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 big fuck you like the the bar in Kentucky that made Jello shots out of Pappy Fifteen when they they got a bottle to like thumb their nose at the the distribution and allocation of shit like that. That's great. Well, I can tell you, there was a time where nobody wanted any of that stuff, yep. and. Because I had it on the shelves, and it's funny because I—I I mean, you know, it's like I don't like talking negatively about brands, other brands. Um, but just my experience was, I we got it. We we're like twenty-three old bourbon. What the fuck is this? You right. know? And we and we had it, and I tried it. I was like, oh, so that's what oak and water tastes like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, and then people be like, "What's that?" And we were trying to let them try it. And then I right. swear to fucking God, it was one guy. Seven years later, he came back, and he was like, "I." He, he was talking to me, you know. Been had. He was like, "I just tried some twenty-three year old Pappy." I was like, "Guess what? You tried it seven years ago, and you didn't like it. And now that it's big. Suddenly, it's your fuck. What? It's your favorite? Is that right. like your favorite yeah. now? You know?" Right. And uh, one one <laughs> Forbes article or whatever it was. <laughs> No, no, it 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 was. I'll tell you what it was. It was justified. Every fucking five minutes in that TV show, justified. Like, are you okay? I don't think so. Let's talk it over, over a glass of Pappy Van Winkle. Brought to you. He's a wild turkey Buffalo man. Trace. I love that show so much. Now I just you, started watching it. You know what I'm talking it about, again. right? It was, yeah. It was like I, every. Oh, that's such a good show, though. Yeah. So you know what's funny? Now that you bring up TV shows and whiskey. My wife and I just started watching um the Good Morning Show, the Morning Show, the Morning Show oh, yeah, on yeah. Uh, Apple TV or whatever. It's got like Jennifer Aniston and uh, yeah. Steve Carell. Yeah, yeah, Steve Carell in it, a bunch of other famous people, and we started watching it. And every time they sit down for a drink, they sit down at his birthday and they have a lot B, and then he <laughs> comes back to one of his like eight houses and he goes into his apartment, he goes to his bar, and he pulls out an old Rip Ten and like pours that, and it's like <laughs> I told Ricky, I was like. Somebody Buffalo Trace. Yeah. Yes. Somebody was like, hey, don't put like the pap the like the high end pappy. Let's go low end pappy. <laughs> so we still have pappy, right? Yeah. But make it more believable. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. The new one. Because what I think it used to be um anything up to twelve was weller. The contract with the Pappy family was anything up to twelve was well was weller. And then uh anything older had to be pappy. That's why okay. twelve is the cutoff for weller. And then oh. it all blew up, and so now, and then now Weller's like, you know, good luck oh getting gosh. that. You know, what new label do you want in this year? Uh, Weller, yeah, they put out a thousand labels a year right now, but um, it'll be bottle and bond before you know it. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. So wait, what did you, what did you enjoy drinking before you started making whiskey? Oh, I like it. Oh, uh, blending whiskey. So uh, it's weird because I see, I, I don't think people like it very much, but I really liked uh, Four Roses Single Barrel. Okay. I think the single barrel is uh is a hundred proof. I think the hundred proof one's the annual release. I don't but not remember. Like, not like the store pick ones, right? Yeah. Just yeah. like the normal. No, not the, not the cast strength one. So okay. yeah, maybe it is a hundred proof. Okay. Yeah. And then Michter's Rye when it was three years old. Wait, hmm. what is it now? I don't know. It doesn't have an age statement anymore, so oh, it's definitely okay. older than four years. Okay. The um. Hmm. We haven't drank Four Roses Single Barrel in so long. And then we, I was gonna say, very recently, we just had. shot a cigar video and did some pairings for the cigar. And Four right. Roses Single Barrel matched up with the cigar so damn well. Perfectly. That it was, it was like, it's wildly good. Like, it just, it makes the cigar better. It made the whiskey better. Mm -hmm. Everything. Uh, I'll tell you what used to be amazing was the Four Roses Yellow Label. That was what we all did shots with at okay. the bar. Really? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. And man, and then... All of a sudden, it was not amazing, and it was never amazing again. <laughs> okay, so one day we were in shots and we're like, "What the?" Fuck we did, we all did shots. We're like, "What the fuck is? What happened?" 
oh, it's like turpentine. You the wrong shit. Yeah, and I was like, that stuff used to be so creamy. And you know, back then you could say bourbon was smooth. You're not, you're not supposed sure. to say yeah. that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, we have one yellow label. We bought it for like a video or something because it's like eighteen or twenty bucks or something like that. And we bought it just for the video because we never, we I don't think we'd ever owned a bottle of it. I'm sure no. we had had it or something, never owned it. So we went and bought a bottle of it, and then we drank it, and it was like, oh, that's just is that just water? I don't know what's <laughs> in here anymore. And then we ended up putting, like we we did like an experiment with oak staves, and we ended up using that bottle with the oak staves to see if we could make it any better because it's like we're never going to drink it anyways, no. right? We might as well. It's only eighty proof though, right? Isn't it eighty proof? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and it was like I, I don't. I we tried to make it taste. It. Yeah, we tried to make it <laughs> yeah. have flavor or a finish or anything. Yeah. I um, mean, I know I know Four Roses is very transparent about their mash bills, so that has to be a low small grain mash bill to be that that price. And then, so you figure take out all the small grains, so there's all your complexity, and it's eighty proof, so it's chill filtered, so it's got no lipid esters or any of that stuff, and it's probably young. It's probably four years in a day. And so yeah. probably when it was older, it probably used to be older. And then they made it four years in a day. And that's when I tried it and was like, ah, what happened? So now it's probably charcoal filtered or something to like strip out all the things that make you go, ah, when right. you have a, you know, so filtered 80 proof bourbon to four the, years um, in a day. Damn near Canadian at that point. Oh, dude. Uh, there's, <laughs> it just comes well, with where Canadian, it's not worth yeah, Canadian whiskey is can be anything. It just has to look, smell, and taste like whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, same same with talking, Canadian rye. I was talking to somebody the other day about Canadian, and I'm like, there was it somebody was here and they were at, they they held up two different bottles and they're like, this one's way darker. And I'm like, they're allowed to just make it that way though. Like oh yeah. You know, it, it can just, coloring. Exactly. hundred yeah. percent. Well, Japanese whiskey apparently is pretty uh, laissez faire about yeah. the the regulations on their stuff as yeah. well. well, the, well they're Irish. Getting or something right now. Japanese whiskey's like there's a whole thing going on with like them because they're getting whiskey from different countries and calling it Japanese, Japanese whiskey. whiskey. Yeah. But, oh. Yeah. Um, well, you know, like like uh, you know, somebody says like uh, what is it? Uh, Irish whiskey that's a blend. I mean, that's hey, no. whatever the fuck you want it to be. <laughs> I, hey, we're oh, so on the same team here because Irish whiskey <laughs> just isn't it. You know what I mean? Where's the blue spot at? There, um, there's real look like uh, red breast, which is a pure okay. pot still. So that means pure pot still is uh, I think 50 percent malted and 50 percent unmalted barley, and it you know distilled three times or whatever. That's like real, but like other stuff is neutral grain spirit and caramel coloring and uh, like 20 percent whiskey. That's probably true. And it's uh, funny because, like, I, I know that from, like, because they used to talk about it. Like, Jameson, the, the brand ambassador would be like, when when Jameson first came out, they were like, you guys are selling this for too much. This is, like, supposed to be, like, well, this has got a lot of uh, neutral distillate in it. And, you know, we want everybody drinking this other stuff. Right. This is not what we want people drinking, but it was too late because the, the hype machine was going. Yeah. and. uh now you know it's like try to try to tell someone that likes jameson you're drinking 80 percent vodka with 20 percent whiskey caramel <laughs> coloring and flavors they'll be like you don't know See, what you're talking about i knew this whole time i knew this whole time that jameson wasn't i didn't i don't like it and i'm one of the ones that i give you well, james i mean the, the entry level as you right, go right. on yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It's all there's no you know it's all there just distillate and not neutral grain spirit and stuff but yeah the entry level stuff is Somebody just gave us, uh, I'm going to use this word very loosely as a gift. Just gave us, just <laughs> oh. gave us Kessler. Yeah. And I had no idea that that was basically just neutral grain spirit. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, we, like, 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 uh, it says American blended whiskey. It's 80. Oh, proof. there you go. Blended whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, and then on the nine ninety nine. That's the the sticker you want. Uh, somewhere on here it says, oh. Uh, Seventy-two and a half percent neutral grain spirits, and then twenty-seven and a half percent straight whiskeys that are two years old. Oh, it has to tell you what's in it now. 
I, they just maybe they just choose to. They I were like, know. "Hey, this is why it tastes like shit." Yeah. You should know. Yeah, I mean, so so that's the thing, right? When we talk about blending, the the problem, the the reason why when you talk about like somebody being a master blender or something like that, is that because of the the U.S. definitions for blending are not what we're doing. Okay. We're, because when, when you're blending whiskeys, you're like blending different types. You're like blending neutral grain spirit with with bourbon or you're blending, you know what I mean? Right. And, and so technically we're not blending. And so the reason the word blending has such a, you know, was never like really promoted is because it had like bad connotations. Well, it the, wasn't. we've had the conversation before on here. I think I said last year that I think eventually whiskey is going to take a turn away from single bearing, single barrel being the big marketing term. And I think it's going to go more towards blending because you there are blended whiskeys that are so much more interesting yeah. than a single barrel of whiskey. And there's something about, and, and I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to undersell it, but you know, they make you the distillates made and then it's put in a barrel and then it's laid down. Maybe it's rotated. Maybe it's not, maybe it's heat cycle, maybe it's whatever, but then it's pulled out and bottled in a single barrel scenario. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas right. With the blending, there's obviously intention that went into it. Hold on, just just so you understand, there's no definition for single barrel either. Anything like, there's no barrel. legal definition. Yeah, like I talked to liquor store guys where back in the day, the the brand rep would show up, and be like, "You want to do a barrel pick?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Like, how many cases you want out of the barrel? Like, I don't know, uh, fifty. And the guy would just take a sticker and put it on <laughs> on all the bottles. And and uh, but usually, that's most, why I'm... most suppliers aren't that dishonest. Usually, right, what sure. they'll do yeah. is they'll have a, a blend, and they'll put it in a new barrel, right? Because sure. anything's bourbon for as long as uh, it's in a new oak barrel, right. and so you can you can take a blend, and, and as long as you put it back in a new oak barrel whether it's for 30 seconds or, or 10 right. seconds and then dump it. And now it's a single barrel. And so if there's a brand single barrel and every time you get it, you're like, wow, that tastes like the last one. That that's what they're doing. It's hmm. not. That's interesting. Yeah. So I think, did they make like some regulation or law this year that Finnish whiskey has to be like different now? Yeah. Can't be bourbon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah it's not yeah. bourbon Finnish whiskey. I think it says that it has to say bourbon finished in a, Okay. I don't know actually because they they were. I, I thought they got to lose bourbon off the, like they couldn't call it bourbon anymore. They had to call it finished yeah, whiskey. That, that's what they were talking about that you couldn't call it bourbon anymore. Yeah. So now, yeah. does then does like double oak in nineteen ten things that are like that are bourbon finished again is in in another new barrel? Is that no longer? I wonder if that's. I, I think that's, that that's I'm, still bourbon because that's still there. bourbon because they're they're not using old the, bourbon. They're okay. using new bourbon again. Or no, the one thing they, they are trying to do is because what I was talking about is having a blend and then put it in a barrel is they're trying to make it so that the age stops after it leaves its its initial barrel. Yeah. Okay. So you can't so, do a blend and then put it in a barrel and age it for longer and, and give see. it the combination age. It stops right. aging as soon as... I and I don't even know if they ever passed the legislation for... Uh, cast strength or barrel proof you know because it was um they're like for there may still be none but i know that they were going to make it so that it had to be the proof at time of tax determination right okay hmm. you got yeah everybody knows what that means right no no one fucking knows what that means <laughs> who the fuck knows what that means your time of tax determination is when you dump a barrel and you report to the federal government how much you've lost. So now is your here's your your proof gallon tax basis, right? Okay. And so that means why it's in a barrel, you can fucking add water. You can proof it down in the barrel because that's before your time of tax determination. Okay. And it's still cast strength or barrel proof or oh, dude, whatever that's the wild. It's all just a game. I so guess. yeah, you could get a really low barrel proof that way. Well, and I'm not saying they did it. But like wild turkey has an eighty-seven percent barrel proof. Eighty-seven percent. You know, you get the shit I'm talking. Eighty-seven proof. Yeah, whatever. Either way, really. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, eighty-seven <laughs> proof, barrel proof, though. Yeah, technically, if you know, or, probably, they had to have because there's. I mean, even MGP, which is like the most humid, natural. I mean, the old Seagram's warehouses, not not the new warehouses. That's the only place naturally where proof goes down over time because it's so fucking humid. Sure, because that's how Seagram's engineered the whole thing. Like it's on the Ohio River. Okay. It's in Indiana instead of Kentucky because that's the way the wind blows. They get all the moist off the uh, all the moist all the <laughs> mist off the uh, all the mist off the Ohio River every morning. It's on top of a giant aquifer. All those rack houses have sub basements, so the dirt's always wet down there. Okay. And then there are these double wall masonry buildings, and there's only windows in the stairwells, really, and so uh, it just seals in all the humidity, and so the alcohol dissipates over. Uh, before right, the water. volume over time. So you yeah. still get your same average proof gallon loss, so, but you just get big, fat, heavy barrels that are filled with lots of volume. They just have a low proof. And the advantage okay. of that is it's not eating away at the uh, the tannins. You know, the higher the proof, the more oak tannin it's going to get. Okay. Damn, that's interesting. I didn't know that. So – yeah. And then also, since I own my barrel okay. since day one, I make sure they're never rotated. Everything just sits on the rack where it's laid down. That way you get uh, you get the balance of the oak moving in and out, right? Because, like, every time you roll that barrel around, you're going to break up the char, okay. especially the first few years. Like, when we do a barrel dump, when I dump a four-year barrel, the fucking char is, like, coming out like a motherfucker. <laughs> if I if I if I dump a ten year barrel, that stuff's like sealed in there, you know, and so hmm. nothing comes out really. And uh, so if you're of all the like, cycles that it's gone through, yeah, and it's like okay. kind of, you know, and I think that's why um, there's very we get very little. I can keep a, a older barrels here in Las Vegas for a while, and it, it changes them for the better. The younger barrels, they just get too much volume loss and the proof goes up and they, they get too oaky um so if you're if you're like say you're starting a barrel on the top floor of your warehouse so it gets dark fast right because that, that's all when these people talk about accelerated aging and all these things that's all they're talking about getting because bourbon's known for that dark color right you know that's right. what separates it from scotch or whatever unless scotch is like finished in a fucking port barrel or something the bourbon's always going to be darker because it's it's, thin, it's aged in a new charred oak barrel. So so accelerated aging is how do you get it dark? And well, if you put it on the sixth floor and let it cook for a couple of years and roll it down, all the char is going to break up, and that'll get it dark faster, and that'll make it you know age faster. But um, now you've got like a, a whole barrel's worth of char floating in the juice, right? And the alcohols eating away at the tannins because now it's eating away these like three-dimensional right. little chips yeah and you're losing the balance you know if you just if you just keep it racked and it's sitting in one place you know oh, I uh, which i guess it. racked now is called side fills because palletized shit's you know so popular that those are top fills you know mm. um and you just let it sit and it's always equally going in and out of the first layer where that's charred, but then the next layer is like where the, the oaks caramelized, and that's where you get all the sugars and the, and then there's the raw wood, you know. And so, uh, not rotating barrels, that's how you get that nice balance. And even in a ten year, you know, people like would comment that when we were doing the ten year or twelve year barrels, like this tastes like a a much younger barrel. It doesn't taste young because there's like grain still or that vegetative, youthful taste, but it tastes young because it's not fucking oak over and, yeah. and heat yeah. and that's fucking it you know right. like i don't want I, you know and that's the thing it's like everybody says they want fucking thousand year old bourbon but you do a blind <laughs> you know. taste you do yeah. a blind taste test i guarantee you they don't want fucking thousand year old bourbon that's not <laughs> going to be their favorite bourbon it will not be their favorite bourbon for, for those guys you know they're like right. yeah what's the oh. oldest you've got when are you going to have a 25 year old bourbon like yeah. what I don't know what are, the twenty-five-year-old bourbon. Get the fuck out! What am I going to? Where am I going to eat that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what they don't understand too. Of it, so. all, all, these like, old, yeah. all these old bourbons are—it's intentional. They're not like, oh, hey, here's a 
barrel that's been on the third floor for 23 years. It's like, okay, these are going to be our super old barrels. So we are going to put them in a basement where yeah. it never gets warmer than 50 degrees. There's no temperature swings. There, you know, it's humid. It's We're like, going to forget they're there. Yeah, yeah because yep. if you are aging it under a normal way, a 23, you'd be like, oh, here. A little drop comes out, and it's you know, it's so. I gotta gross. say, for so, so go back to Irish whiskey because I had to go grab some oh bars. My gosh, you're still on Irish whiskey. <laughs> okay, we're the, on the worst whiskey on the planet. The spots okay. are where you're, you like blue spot. Go no, fuck I just yourself. meant the category, not, oh. the, not these two. These two are a good when you brought red breast. I would say these are also really good pot stilled whiskeys in the spots. Oh, these are good. If these are pot, and, yeah, are they called pure pot still? I don't know if it says pure pot still. It says single pure pot, pot still. still is an Irish whiskey sort of. Uh, yeah, it says category. single pot still. Yeah, so that's that's real shit. Okay, so the if you ever see the spots and if you haven't had them, you should try them out. They're, they're fine, you know. They're the fine. blue spot's definitely the best. And then I gotta ask, how do you feel about Texas whiskey then? Oh, I have a question based on that too. I had a uh, question because I, I mean that that's that hot, hot oak, oak treatment yeah, that yeah. you're getting. Yeah. Um. Like, uh, uh, I, well, I can't. I can't talk about Balconies. I've never really had it. Okay. Um, there's some other Texas whiskey that I've had that Iron uh, Root. I I, I, I wouldn't pay how much they're asking for oh. it. Yeah. Yeah. Five year old bourbon for fucking 168 dollars or whatever. Yeah, it's weird because I okay. So somebody that just asked. It. So we're doing more and more barrel picks for the channel, right? Like, as right. Of like so. Somebody mentioned doing a barrel pick from the same distillery you're referencing right now. <laughs> and so, and, and we've had barrel picks from them that we enjoyed. Yeah. But the price tags on them seem asinine to me. So the one of the, the person referencing it said, hey, you should do a barrel pick with these guys, like a cast strength barrel pick. And I'm like, here's the problem. We're talking that that's two to three year old whiskey, and it's gonna be 150 bucks retail, right? It's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's so crazy. In, I I don't see I don't know. I, I'm not talking from it. a marketing or a price perspective. I just was wondering what what your thoughts were on like how it it's like basically rapid age because of the temperature and stuff. Well, like the that. W- one thing they have in Texas that I don't have is humidity. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, fucking Texas is hot and humid. Yeah, we you know so uh, they probably have less loss than than we would because you know here man i mean this past summer it fucking didn't rain it was like four percent humidity i've never seen it that low that's crazy yeah that's you know are are your guys is rick Rick house is temperature controlled at all or well i mean i age everything for the majority in indiana uh my where my warehouse is for sure yeah Okay, we have yeah, them on, that's right, man. on the, on the uh, like the wine racks here when you see them all yep. stacked up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I wouldn't be able to get anybody to work if they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's only in the middle of a desert. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that, um, did you, and I may have misheard you, did the, so you have MGP contract is still now. That's how that works for you since 2015. Oh, oh wow. Shit. Okay. Oh, that, yeah. So, and that's why it's weird because I, I think technically that's, sourcing right technically yeah here's the thing right so so my my 13 year old barrels right well mgp didn't do that that was seagram's so is that seagram's or is that mgp right my eight-year barrels that's not mgp that's ldi okay is that is that ldi or is that or is it mine (laughs) or my barrels that i contracted them to lay down that wouldn't exist if i didn't say hey you know i mean it's their federal batch ID number, but when I transfer them, I'm transferring them under the original. You know, it's all because you got to report it to the federal government, okay. and I'm transporting it under the original owner. We're not doing a barrel transfer. We're not doing a sale. Right. They're my barrels. I've been in control of them since day one. I dictated where, what floors they're on, what warehouses, side filled, racked. You know, right. so, so who. What is, you know, so it's like, uh, so whose are they? Right. Exactly. Is, you know what I mean? Well, and people, it's like a, little a, muddy. Couple, a couple years ago, a lot of people had an issue when they started to find out that a lot of really good whiskey was sourced, right? Like there was this big out, 
what what the fuck is the word? Out, Outpour, out, out, outrage, outroar, outrage. That's a word. So, anyways, it's, it's been like that forever. Right. I think the the fundamental difference is all the big brands closed their doors on craft guys, mm-hmm. and then there was MDP mm-hmm. who had just bought the sequence facility facility, which was basically no one, you know, see see nobody had owned that as like their facility since. Seagram sold it to Diageo. Right. And, and and so um which I don't know what year that was, you know. So so all of a sudden, like when people are buying stuff from Heaven Hill, nobody complained. When people right. are buying stuff from Four Roses, nobody complained. But people were, you know, for all these other guys, but all of a sudden it's MGP and mm-hmm. you know, like, oh, it's source, yeah. you know. Well, and everybody got like upset but hurt about M- about sourcing, the word source, right? Yeah. Right. Nobody gave a shit that a bunch of other brands were contract distilling to other right to other labels similar shit. right like you said right. it, would, it that wouldn't have been there or sometimes in sometimes the mash bill wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for whatever right. yeah but it's still being made by the people there at the, whatever location mm-hmm. it's contract and there's some big ass brands that contract distill and it's like wait why the hell is nobody bitching about this if you want to bitch about everything in the world. Then bitch about contract distilling too. But I you guess. didn't make it. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, look, there, there's one that I know is moving to MGP. Uh, they're going to use their yeast and, and right. everything, and it's their it's their mash bill. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, theoretically, I could create a new mash bill at MGP, but you know, right. whatever. Well, I think it just comes back to your point of you know the Desert Jewel or whatever when you were like. Okay, well, this is what's in it. Good luck trying to recreate it. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, uncut, unfiltered. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, right. You know? uh, I mean, that's what's in it. Good luck. Have fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you think you can do it, go ahead. Okay, so Brad Templeton was sued for lying. That's a very yeah. different. They said that they were distill. They had their own distillate when they didn't even have a still in <laughs> their <laughs> distillery. Oh, uh, here's the other thing, right? Templeton is not a straight rye. It is a rye. <laughs> There's, it is not there, protected like, you know, there used to be straight bourbon and bourbon, but in the 60s when bourbon became a distinct American spirit, you could not have any flavors or, or your non-alcohol right. blenders or any of that stuff. Straight rye is not, it, it, I mean, rye is not like that. So if it's not a straight rye, it can have non-alcohol blenders. It can have flavors. It can have all that shit. So not only are they not, were they not making their own stuff? They're not even a straight rye. So it's like you got you know shit me. And the thing is, like two and a half percent flavors. You know, back in the day was like oh, like a syrup or whatever. Now two and a half percent flavors is shit fucking made in the lab. Yeah. <laughs> it's like highly yeah. concentrated. Right. It, it will change the flavor of what you're drinking significantly. You know? Right. Dude, well, uh, isn't Canadian allowed to be like 20% or some shit like that? Canadians got like a wild range on what they're allowed to do. Like like with adding flavor. Yeah. It's allowed to be a good oh, chunk yeah. of, yeah. of of whiskey or whatever. You got, you you got the, a good background and a fucking cat. God damn and that's it. a panther. Just yeah. a white so, wall, a corner of a TV, so a door. And... Got, this one's got thumbs in everything, too, which is wild. But Oh, so open your uh, bourbon bottles for you? He doesn't. He mm-hmm. One time, he pissed in here, and I, I left him outside. Like, he's an outdoor cat, right? But he comes in oh, here because okay. it's so cold and stuff. And so, but now he's he's been in here because it's been cold for so long that he's like, I'm not going out, bitch. No, this, I live here now. Yeah. <laughs> and no, now he's just an asshole that like crawls around and meows in here and that yep, kind of we shit, definitely so. have a, a emoji and that people are definitely spamming in chat yeah. right now for cookie <laughs> are you guys gonna hey do you so wait right now do you yes. only drink your product yes really mm. baller. bro Fuck. that's wild to me okay hold on so when's the last time that you think you drank a different product About 2014. <laughs> He's like, uh, back in 2000. Man, I'd really have to think about that. I mean, it was definitely before 2016. Holy shit. Because that's when we were released. And uh, so I always had it at my bar. 
And um, and if I ever went out, you know, I was doing everything back then. So if I was right. going out, it was to, to do account support. So I didn't go anywhere that didn't have my stuff, you know. Right. Yeah. So then if if you were going to drink something else, what would it be? I'm trying to get you. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'd have. <laughs> okay. Well, you, well, you already said the the four roses. I don't know. What, what you used like. to be it for you. That's true. Yeah, no, that's four true. roses. Okay, off that's off like a, a long term memory. You know, like you could think it tastes like fucking cotton candy still, and it might not anymore. But like, well, and stuff changes too. You know, right. I mean, you never know. Like what? Uh, you know, everybody's blown up. You know, it's not all these right. big brands are doing so much more than they used to. You know, yeah. I mean, I. I mean, when Four Roses was doing barrel picks back in the day, like, like nobody knew about that shit. I mean, I can't even imagine how many barrel picks they do now. Hmm. By the way, it's all changed. When they used to be like the only real barrel picks, everybody else had a barrel program, right? You know, so I can tell you when when my uh, the, the private barrel came out, and I said, "This is beyond single barrel. This is like from <laughs> one barrel," of that. because the fucking sales reps at the distributor would be like, oh, you're doing a barrel? I can't wait. I'm like, yeah, here you go. They're like, why are there only like 25 cases? I'm like, well, it's a nine-year barrel and it's cast strength. Right. I mean, that's the how, barrel. How, how, works, yeah. Yeah. How, how many do you think? They're like, well, for blah, 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 we get like, I don't know, like 65, 70 cases. I'm like, oh, out of a 53-gallon barrel. Yeah. <laughs> how big is your fucking barrel? Thing? Huh. How, how does that work? And it was like, I mean, I even just saw one where it was like, 130 bottles or something like that. And I was like, 130 bottles. That's a lot of cases out of one barrel. I'm, I don't understand how that worked, you know? Sure. And uh, it, could it be that they're either lying or they took a blend and filled a barrel all right. the way to the fucking top and then dumped it. And then there you go. Now you suddenly got, you know, almost 53 gallons worth of juice out of a, old barrel <laughs> well, then, some some distilleries now we just did a pick with sagamore rye right yeah. and they were very trans like after we we got samples from them and then as i'm looking at the sample bottles i'm like so these are they're all going to be 110 proof yeah and then but it was like but they're cast strength and then it was like no. Okay, so how, I'm just I'm so I reach back out and I'm like, hey, I just want to know how the whole thing works. I just want to know what's going on, right? Insight, right? Yeah. And they were super transparent. They're like, listen, so we actually source because their rye are from MGP. They're like, we actually source these uh, rye mash bills from MGP, right? Right. And then when we do that for our barrel program, like you just said, for our barrel program, what we do is we take these three uh, mash bills and then we blend them, and you're getting every sample bottle you have is a different blend. With a different ratio in it, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. That that's how everybody used to be. That's how it all right. used to be. And, and, and then like, you get a barrel, right, right? Exactly. That was part of the barrel program because you you get this exclusive blend, but it comes with a barrel, yeah. and but nobody's asking your the questions you asked, and so everybody's like, "Yeah, I bought a barrel from." Technically, they're not lying. Right. Yeah. You got a fucking empty barrel. Right. <laughs> empty barrel. And that was that's initially why I got so confused is because the distributor here said, "Do you want the barrel?" And then we started looking at like because the sample bottles have all the information on it. And Sagamore was super transparent when we started talking about it, right? Which and they're like, great. "No, listen, do you have different blends? If you don't like the blends, those are what we currently have. We can try different blends, you know, whatever." Right. It was like, I don't mind this, but in we had a very similar situation with Redwood Empire, yep. where. They do um, their store picks or their barrel picks or whatever are different Bashed finishes, almost, right? Yeah. So you have a poured and a Chardonnay and a cab finish or whatever. Right. And we got those and we picked one. And then I got back with one of the people and they were like, oh, that barrel sold out. Or, or I'm sorry, that batch is sold out. And I'm like, why would you send us three barrels that you were just going to sell when we picked one? And he goes, no, no, no. no, no. no. We blend all of the port finished whiskey together and then we blend all the Chardonnay and then we blend all the cab. And then you just taste from that batch of blending. And I'm like, as long as I know that I don't have a problem with it, but the yeah, don't, is- don't call. I mean, cause even now, you know, I, I don't have time cause we can't fit into the, the bottling schedule, but you know, I would do a blend. I would, I would call it a custom blend, you know, Hey, right, you want right. to do a custom, yeah. I wouldn't be like, Hey, you want to do a barrel program? 
It's right. not a barrel. It's a blend. Right. It's a batch. Just kidding. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a blend that I put in a barrel. Do, all, you get that barrel. All you got to do is put every word on the label. You're covered. Yeah. 100%. That, oh, man. That was like, uh, oh, God. The funniest comment. Well, not the funniest, but it was a very funny comment. It was like someone was talking shit about bourbon. I think it was Fred Minnick that shared it. And he was like, I don't care if it's a single batch, double batch, special batch. <laughs> Batch batch. <laughs> I don't like I don't like bourbon. I was like, oh my god, I gotta call rare and limited single batch, double batch, special batch, etc. etc. Batch. Et cetera, batch. batch. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Well, what is it? Who is it? Knob Creek has single barrel small batch on their label, right? Or something like that. Victor's has the worst labeling. You no, know that. But they literally on their store picks or something, it says single barrel uh, small batch. I swear to God. On one of their yeah, I by the way, I wish I didn't call small batch small batch. I wish I called it something else. Now, you know, it's like small batch is like so Anything. overused. Oh, yeah. How and, small uh, is your batch? Uh, about ten thousand barrels. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> More barrels than most people have, <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Super small. Oh gosh, dude. That would have been the greatest name ever. Single single batch, <laughs> double batch, triple batch, batch, batch. <laughs> batch, et cetera, et cetera, batch. The batch bash. Jerry Francis oh, right. said one batch, two batch, red batch, blue batch. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a Dr. Seuss book, dude. <laughs> That's so great. Super premium oh. batch. Yeah. So since you uh since you contract is still, then in the future, are you going to do like a rye or something like that or no? Oh yeah. Uh I actually wanted to do it sooner, but you know, we were offered those um two things happen. Yeah. One, we were offered those 1,400 barrels, and I had to take them. It sure. was like, that, you know, because we bought everything in 2012, and we started a contract distilling in 2015, so we kind of had a big giant hole in inventory, and it filled that hole. Um, and then, you know, we're doing this property and everything, and that's fucking expensive. But, right. you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do, because I don't like to do... I. What most suppliers do is they go to MGP and they say, oh, can I get some rye? And they're like, I mean, by the way, you used to not be able, when we started dealing with MGP, they would not sell you like 12 barrels. You had to go big or go home, you know? And then they got, um, they stopped dealing with craft guys. You know, not whether, I don't even know if I'm craft anymore, but they started, they stopped dealing with small suppliers. Sure. And um, they, they, every, everybody had to go through Ultra Pure. And so Ultra Pure would do like one big contract with MGP, and then everybody was, would buy through Ultra Pure. Now they, they've, you know, they had to like sort of modernize their system because they were set up just, you know, to deal with like Diageo and, sure. and, and yeah. Dickel and all these big companies, not a bunch of little tiny companies. Um, so now you can go and buy 20, 20 barrels or whatever. And, and yeah, I could go do that, but I don't really want to do it unless I can do it right and buy sure. a shit ton of barrels and start laying it down so that I, you know, we can do it, um, continue, you know, keep, keep doing it. I mean, cause yeah. look, when I bought those 1400 barrels, I know a lot of people that were buying like 20 barrels at a time from MGP with 36% rye. And we bought everything they had available between five and seven years. And a lot of it had been on hold and and wasn't going to be released. And so when we did that, all of a sudden, like all these guys were like, yeah, I'll just go buy, you know, 10 or 15 barrels from MGP and do another release. They couldn't because there was nothing there. And, right. you know, uh, so, so yeah, so, so the long, long winded answer is yes, I want to do a riot. I do want to be able to do it right, but who knows with the rare and limited, maybe we can do a rare and limited rye just sure. to get it out there. Cause I'd figured out a really cool blend. It was with a traditional 51% rye, you know, uh, however much corn and barley. And then one that was like big, uh, 51% rye and, and had a lot of malted barley. And that was one that was on hold, but they were going to release it. Uh, and I was, I figured out a really great blend of different vintages and, and those mash bills. And it was beautiful. The funny thing is, it, it tasted like uh, the, the you know the mixtures that I well, I shouldn't say like what I liked about the mixtures is it was so beautiful and 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 uh, fruity 
and you know like all the stuff that I blend because we're blending this old stuff, old bourbon and young bourbon. I can really give it that intense, big, spicy rye finish. And then this stuff was way more delicate than that, even at cast strength. So, but, uh, but yeah, I'd like to do a rye for sure. The, um, I, we, when we started the channel, we were like, we are on record or on camera, whatever the hell oh, it's yeah. called. So many times being like, we're not big rye guys. We hate rye. <laughs> now, it's so often. We just it, didn't know. Like, it's just, I mean, ryes are so fucking good. You know what I mean? And, and you yeah. don't understand how big of a component the rye is bourbon. in bourbon. That's true. Yeah. I mean, and on top of that, like, the one of the things that we found so interesting is, like, there how many good four-year ryes there are. Like, really good oh, yeah. four-year ryes. Rye ages very fast. Right. I do what, not. What you can like, do. So, and, yeah. yeah so, right, go ahead. Well, yeah. So, like, say you take that 95% rye mash bill, which is never meant to be a rye it was meant to be a blender you know oh, yeah. that's why it's not 95 percent rye because you're making yeah, secret seven or something like that sure. you're blending it in with neutral grain spirit or light whiskey and you really want to bring in the flavor when you start seeing those at seven years it's like well, what the fuck the rye's aged out right what are you drinking and, and and that's the thing with like a lot of the younger rye too i mean sorry uh, yeah, that's why I agree. The, the four year rye is exceptional, you know. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's crazy what you like when you're seeing like two to four year rye pop up and just being phenomenal, right? And you're like, wow, you can't do that with bourbon. You take a two year bourbon, you're like, this tastes like shit. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want that. it'll be very grainy, you'll have a yeah. lot of that vegetative youth, you know. Yep. And like a, a nice three-year rye, you're like, wow, this seems like very complex. I would never guess that you're getting this type of drink yeah. out of three years. Um, just well, the the Willet the, four-year ryes yeah. are ridiculously good. Yeah. And they're like 50 bucks-ish, maybe 60 or whatever they are. Yeah. But they're like, Yeah, I mean, that, that's a trade-off. It's young. Right. But small grains are expensive. Sure. Yeah. It's cheap. You know, well, well that's I why mean, those alter age rise that are, you know, good are expensive. Oh my God. Rise expensive. Right. Well, rise expensive. And, but the funny thing is, is it's like you go pay like 50 or $60, $50 or $60 kind of become like a normal price for whiskey right now. Right. Pretty you know much, what I mean? Right. Like everything's fucking wild right now. So yeah, with everything like going up and then you see like a 50 or $60 bottle. Now it's so much more acceptable. Whereas before, like you're like 40 bucks. I'll probably pick up a 40, you know, 60. Yeah. I might consider it, but now yeah, uh, that, that's why I, again, the straight bourbon, you know, that's right. when I finally started to figure it out. I was like, I think this is why I'm obsessed with doing this right? is because everything is so expensive and so weird and, and so unapproachable by yeah. like your average person, you know, or even like whiskey drinker. It's like, I, I, I would think that people would just get to a point of it. are like, can I just fucking find something that tastes good yeah. that is reasonably priced? Like, cause you know, look for me, like uncut unfiltered, I'm drinking that I'm by myself, you know, at the sure. end of the day, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm picking out flavors. I'm not someone I'm going to drink in a social situation. First of all, it's like a hundred, you know, 16 proof, yeah. you know, where you have a few of those while you're out. Like, all right. <laughs> and, and then it's kind of a waste because you're, you're going to be talking. You're not going to be, you know, at least for me. I mean, obviously, whatever, people do whatever they want. And so it's nice to have stuff like small batch or the straight bourbon where you can drink socially and not fall over. And uh, you just like, oh, it take, you, you're just drinking it without thinking about it. And it right. tastes good. You know, well, and it didn't yeah, cost and a lot that's of what we call it. We'll, we'll say like a nice background whiskey where you can do anything and you yeah. can crush some and not die. Uh, yeah, and, and like there are things that you want to drink, like we were talking about uncut on filter. You sit down, you want to pick it apart a little bit, think about yeah. some notes, like how it's going. But yeah, I mean, that's fantastic. You got it. There, there's, there's like a place for both of those things, right? I, right. One of the only times that I ever had. Uh, literally the only time I ever had Booker's Rye was, which is like Booker's Rye is such an uh, what, experience, a famous rye. I yeah. don't know what the right word is, right? And everybody says it's the best rye in the whole planet and blah, 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 blah. And the only time I ever had Booker's Rye, I paid $60 for, one, for one pour 
and we were at a bar. There were six of us pre-COVID with our friend. Yeah. So we're all talking shit. We're all hanging <laughs> out. We're all giving each other a hard time, right? And it was gone, and you were like, wait, what was that? What are you doing? Yeah. In, in, uh, right now, to this very moment in my fucking life, Can't remember that was a year like. and a half ago, and I couldn't give you a single fucking note, right? So <laughs> and I paid $60 out of my ass for a fucking <laughs> half ounce pour or whatever it was, yeah. right? But, well, they measured it, and they measured it like. <laughs> yeah, and it was one of those things where it's like there's a time and a place, like you just said, chilling like Sean was agreeing chilling at home and you have the time right or right. sometimes like one of my like you watch a tv just show. to chill and smoke a cigar and drink a whiskey or try to find a whiskey that matches a cigar really yes. well something like that is like right there's a moment in time it's like a zen thing almost yep. yeah but there are so many times because whiskey was pre-covid a social thing right yep. that there are so many times when you're like Listen, I'm not cracking the Booker's Rye right now because now <laughs> I'm, fucking tired. I'm getting the Mictor's American. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna yeah. sit down. Yeah. We're gonna do whatever. Yeah, we can crush it. I don't care if that bottle's gone by the end of the night. Yep. There, there was a time where all you could get was uh, old overhaul. Yeah, and I used to have it. People were like, why? You know, because nobody even knew what Rye American Rye whiskey was. They just sure. knew like what Canadian Rye was. And then I remember when uh, the uh, Sazerac rep came by. And then, boom, Rye was everywhere. Dude, I it's such a – like, last was year. It, two years ago? It was pre-COVID. It was the yeah. year before COVID. So okay. 2019 yeah. seemed to be the year of the Rye because everybody yeah. fucking made one, right? Yeah, and yeah. hitters. Every big release for the year, for the most part, from the big distilleries was like Cornerstone, yeah. Parker's Heritage, you know, all that type of shit. The next Kentucky Hour. And they've, and they've all um, adopted green as the color for Rye. Right, you know, mm-hmm. all, the, all the rye labels are green. Right. And traditionally, rye was blue. Like <laughs> you would get, you get it, like especially like pre-age stuff. You know, like okay. Revolutionary War rye would come in a blue glass bottle, and uh, really, yeah, and the corn whiskey would come in a clear bottle. So huh. Chattanooga rye, and I'm a big fan of this. Chattanooga out of Tennessee, purple. They made their rye purple, and I like it. And I think I like it because it's obnoxiously different for no reason. I have no idea why right. the fuck it's purple. But I know that it's purple, and when I see it, I know that that's their rye, I mean, and I yeah, fucking that, love it. That label stands out. Like, that nice purple accent on it. You know. It is damn good, too, actually. It is really it's good. Really good but. And that's young, too. That's two years old. Yeah. Yeah. No. Says on the bottle, it's two years old. But it, it I don't know. I... I hope that, you know, it sounds like we talked about it a little bit off stream and I won't get into it on stream, but we talked about how you guys are moving and Good you guys are, are making moves and stuff yeah. like that, which Make is fun, move. which is so great because obviously, I mean, there have been a kajillion chats in here about like the expansion of, uh, of distribution, right? Yeah, it's hard. And right. so, and I'm with you growing into a new space or whatever. It, it's so great because it, hopefully events long-term, it allows for that, right? Obviously, oh, yeah. want for it, which is great. So yeah, well, I mean, sixty thousand in eleven states. So yeah, yeah, it seems like it's a big <laughs> deal. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, it's crazy. It's I mean, and that and that's not even keeping up with demand in those states, right. you know. And and a lot, like I said, a lot of that. Well, a lot of it's uncut, but a lot of it's straight bourbon. You mm-hmm. know, just that shit just sells like great. Like people love it, and it's yeah. affordable, and um. And it's funny too because you know, like being in the bourbon community and all these things, you forget. You forget about some guy who doesn't even have a fucking Facebook or an Instagram, and he goes to a liquor store, and they're doing a tasting, and, right? Mm-hmm. You know, or or the kid that works at the liquor store is like, "Oh, this stuff's great. I think you know, I see what you buy. This is affordable. You're really gonna like it." And they're like, "That was amazing. I want more of that." And they don't know yep. what the secondary market is. Right. They don't know like what the fuck caskers is or, you know, or, or you know, and, um, and so it's funny cause like we all for, forget about it. Me, myself included, you know, you, being on Instagram and seeing the bourbon community and, and all these things, you forget about these guys that are just like, uh, outside of that and, and just whiskey, you know, bourbon drinkers that are completely removed from the hype. And right. that's cool, <laughs> you know, yeah. for me, because like, like, yeah, you know, the hype is the hype. You know, I get freaked out over it because it's like, ah, FOMO somebody's the trying it for the first time. Is right. it going to live up to their expectations? Or if I'm making an uncut, I'm like, hmm, this is good. But is it, is it good enough? 
Is it good <laughs> enough for the hype? What if somebody tries? What if this isn't that good? What if I think it's good, but somebody else doesn't? You know, sure. and I never used to have those thoughts. It's be like, this is delicious. Right. Here you go, well, world. You know? but now you have. I mean, I, I don't. There's some volition in there, I, yeah, and the reasons you've already had. Yeah, I don't think it's a it's a debatable point that you have the track record of like putting out good fucking blends, right? Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. I, don't, I think now what happens is people see it, and if it's a new blend, they're like, "Cool, I don't fucking have that one." That's yeah. kind of how it probably turns out now. Yeah, yeah. I had previous no, for one, the uncut like, for sure. That. Right. Yeah, for the uncut, absolutely. Dude, the the funny thing is, like, what you're explaining is like the purity of like a new whiskey drinker, right? And <laughs> and it's funny, the innocence. It, it's so it, it, it's like a very pure thing because because of the ignorance or whatever, the lack of knowledge of of secondary of what the Facebook groups, of most. Instagram, yeah. of whatever. Right. But what it allows that person to do sometimes is is find them find something they really like without yeah. all the bolt. Yeah, they don't have to go yeah, like, no marketing. They don't have to yeah. go like Blanton's, right? Because right. that's not how they're fucking getting into this pool, right? Well, they can't find it. They're so. dipping a little toe <laughs> in, right? They might find like a normal fucking anything. It could be yep. gentleman Jack for whatever. It could be anything. I mean, someone's. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, that, that's the whole point of the straight bourbon is you know when you say entry level, entry level isn't supposed to be shitty. It's supposed to be accessible where anyone can try it. You know, yeah. and and. uh I mean, because obviously, you know, I mean, people have bad experiences with bourbon too. Because like, right. there's someone who's like drink, uh, drinking 130 proof stuff, and someone's like, "I want to try some bourbon." <laughs> like, here you go. <laughs> Not this one. <laughs> and, and then your know, eyes are watering, yeah. tears are coming down. They're like, yeah. "Oh, you just can't handle it." And yeah. um, and I also think there's a lot of stuff out there that nobody likes, but pickle. What? And, and, and everybody, oh, think, yeah. Everyone thinks that they. That they just have to get a little more sophisticated. Their palate has to be a little more sophisticated, sure. and then they'll like it. Sure. And no one yeah, wants yeah, to admit that they ones. don't like it because then everybody can go, "Oh, well, you just said don't have a sophisticated." <laughs> you don't need a sophisticated palate to fucking say this tastes good or this tastes bad. Yeah. You might need it. To, someone says, "How is it?" And you're like, "Oh, okay. Well, I right. taste this and I taste that." Because you're, you're describing an experience that someone else can't have. But anyone should be able to pick something up and be like, mm, it's like fucking ice cream. You know, if you like a flavor of ice cream or you don't, or if it's like right. shitty ice cream with a bunch of gum in it versus like fresh and creamy, <laughs> you can, anyone can tell, you know? Right. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's like you just, if you like something, you like it. If you, and that's the other thing, too. People are like, how should I drink this? I'm like, well, how? Well, I don't know. I don't know the fuck you want. You know? It's how do like, you normally drink your whiskey? <laughs> yeah, I was like, if it's too, you know, the 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 rule of thumb is if it's like you want it to be sweeter, add water. If it's if you like the flavor profile, but there's too much heat, you know, that's why they make those big spheres that don't melt. Right. I use trashy freezer ice. <laughs> I'm trashy. I don't I don't have a little ball maker at my house or anything. But uh, but yeah, you know, it's like fucking alcohol is not good for you. Enjoy it, you know. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're well, not enjoying I, it, he, somebody posted you know, on Facebook yeah. group the other day uh, a video of somebody that I just won't name, but it's a YouTuber who said uh, it's you need to get away from the bad habit. They said it in one of their videos. You need to get away from the bad habit of putting ice in your whiskey. And oh, I commented on that. And I'm like. You gotta get away from the bad habit of telling people what the fuck to do, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, exactly. I, I, who the listen, fuck? Is, who is that? You know? Yeah, Some exactly. Asshole. Well, and it's like it's not a fucking bad habit if that's how you drink it, and that's also how a lot of people get into whiskey, right? 100%. Like a lot of people, you're not start feeding there. people Stag Junior like you're saying, being like, "Hey, this is good. You should like it," and they're gonna be like, yeah. "Holy fuck, what yeah. is that? that? Damn near killed me." Yeah, so I'm not gonna do that. Anymore. I guess I'm never drinking bourbon because like I, I know. Yeah. It's like certain scotch with like a fucking octomore, right? Yeah. You're the like 16. That's the most peated shit I've ever had. My, I don't even know what peat is, but that's a fucking experience. And I didn't love it. Right. And then you're well, out well, or whatever. Here's a perfect example, right? Desert Jewel that you guys have, right? Now everybody wants it because it's gone. And um, I can tell you when I did tastings, the Desert Jewel is very polarizing because it was the oaky. Usually I blend the oak out of stuff. And that was just a straight 10 year. Sure. High floor. The reason I did it is because they were getting over oaked. Not not all the barrels. Right. 
And so a lot of people didn't like it out of the bottle, myself included. But, man, I fucking loved it on ice in the right. summertime. I could take all of a sudden, you know, because I'm very tannin sensitive. And so the oak would be in the background. And I could taste the, the cocoa and all these subtle flavors sure. that I couldn't taste it neat. And uh, and I've even like people when it was readily available. Like I remember someone you tried it. and He's like, I don't really like this. It's like try it on ice. He's like, cube. Like no, fucking get ice out of your fucking freezer, man. Don't worry about the cube, the balls or the <laughs> cube. Right. Stop fucking no, worry about yeah, ice. Yeah, yeah, a Korean has to come to your house <laughs> and hand carve and brand a piece it's of ice. Got to be the shape of a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not gonna taste good. And uh, and he's like, oh, I really like it this way, but it's you know this is expensive. Is it, am I ruining it? Like, I don't think. Well, I don't know. Is making it taste better for you ruining it? I mean, okay. how is that ruining it? It's not like you're like, yeah, man, I didn't really like this, so I did like a, a third desert jewel and two thirds, you know, fucking diet coke. Then I'd be like, hey, maybe you're blowing your money on something, right? right? Yeah, you, you shouldn't be. But if you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you just want to access those flavors that your palate isn't sure. getting because it's too oak heavy, no, you're not ruining it. And, and so anybody's like, ooh, Dude, there's I, just there's so much. Um, they can blow me, you know. Exactly, one hundred percent. Yeah, I literally said you're snobbery around in the it. group. I said that guy can fuck himself. I said that in the group yeah. because my problem with it is there's so much snobbery in the. Listen, Sean and I are not adults and we're not mature human <laughs> beings, right? That's true. But that's not what we're trying to do. And what we're trying to do is just have a good fucking time with cool people, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, and I, I, I'd say, I mean, the majority of people I come in contact with are, are like that. You know, it's right. funny because I do hear people say, oh, there's a lot of assholes in the bourbon community. Or the, and I, I mean, well, I mean, obviously my perception is skewed because they, I'm a supplier. I've got an Instagram with a lot of followers. And so, sure. you know, there's people that like look up to me, maybe whether they're putting their best foot forward or, or, or maybe it's just because I'm, you know, pretty fucking happy and positive. And so those are the people I attract, sure. you know, who knows. But, um, but for the most part, it just seems like, you know, those assholes, man, it's like, and I feel bad for people that listen to them because not everybody has the confidence to say, fuck that guy. Right. You know, you know, a lot of them are like, oh, I guess I'll just sit here with my hot <laughs> un drink I don't like. Right. And, and, and I yeah. want to drink it too. And this, I don't, I don't Dude. like this, but this guy over here, he, he told me if I put ice in it, I'm a loser, right. you know? Well, like, and that's what, like, when we do things that are maybe not fully accepted, like drink out of a bottle during a review <laughs> or <laughs> flip a bottle of whiskey and it, it, there's a chance that it breaks, but we catch it. <laughs> yeah. when, we, when we do shit like that and people complain, it's like, hey, when you start buying all of our whiskey, you get to tell yeah. us what to do with it, right? Yeah. But for now, yeah. we pay for we're it. We're going to have fun with it. Yeah, yeah. In, in that bottle that you just referenced us drinking out of, we weren't sending to you anyway, so you don't have to worry <laughs> about it, right? <laughs> And it's just such an interesting thing that there's such like this entitlement to tell people, no, 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 no. It only works this way. And that's the only way to do it. And blah, blah. And it's like, dude, well, I don't understand that energy of like, you have to do it the way I do it or you can't do it at all. It's like, what the well, hell? Yeah. yeah. And, and obviously that does not come from, you know, a, a good place. It's like, right. you know, it's like, you're not trying, you're not really trying to help someone right? by telling them that that's not helpful. You're just trying to, you know, show your superior. It's all like bullshit ego stuff, and it, it's such it's an really, antiquated idea, like that you you have to enjoy something a certain way, yeah. or you're wrong. Like, right. eh, it's 2021. Do what you want, man. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> like fuck it. We don't so, care anymore. Somebody, somebody in chat a little bit ago just said, "Have you ever got? Have you guys ever tried ass sweat and proper twelve? <laughs> it's it's perfect." <laughs> <laughs> But it's just, it's, I don't know, man. It's just one of those things. It's such a silly, it's such a silly thing, but whatever. It's such a facade. Yeah. Um, That's the thing. So Chris has said, how many people actually started drinking whiskey neat? Not many, I would guess. I'd guess you're correct, sir. Mm -hmm. I would bet a lot. I didn't. Yeah, nope. I didn't start drinking. Started mixed. I, I 
So I hate Jack and Cokes. There's something about whiskey and Coke. I hate the flavor. Uh, yeah. Of every whiskey and Coke I've ever had. Right. Nice and sweet. Now that being said, Jack and Coke's one of the most fucking popular bar drinks on the planet. I think, I don't yep. know. So right. it's like, obviously I can't tell people never have a Jack and Coke. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you say whiskey Coke, it's either a bean or a Jack. That, that's a, that's a different, that's a different thing. That's not, that's my experience as a bar owner. That's like, man, fucking get that. Sh- you don't want that. That right. sugar and alcohol shit is going to fuck you up. Right. You're not going to have a good time. Wait, do you want to die tonight? Or <laughs> you wanna- <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Gonna- yeah. Yeah. Cause if you do, I got Red Bull and vodka and that'll get you there quicker. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just the al. I mean, it just totally fucks up. You know, you, you drink the high fructose corn syrup. Your body's trying to metabolize all the alcohol. All the fucking high fructose corn syrup, oh. all the caffeine. You got nice uppers yeah. and downers going at oh, you. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be sad. Um, mm. yeah, that was a good super chat actually. What was that? Oh, well, the mouse is not working. Um, it was Bubble Bath Bourbon. He says, "Does anyone start drinking coffee straight?" Yes, I actually well, did weirdly. Black coffee is where yeah. you started. Yeah, isn't that weird? Now that yeah. All right. Well, I might you. be a serial killer. I don't <laughs> yeah. <know. laughs> Yep, 100% you are. I already know that. That's why you own tobacco. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that that's a fair comparison. Like, you start drinking coffee, you're like, wow, that tastes like shit. So much stuff is acquired. Yeah. So many different, not whiskey, so much every, beer is acquired, whiskey is acquired, coffee is acquired. Like, there's so much stuff adults consume. Yeah. That's an acquired taste. That- yeah. I don't know if bourbon, uh, I don't know if bourbon was for me. You just liked it? Whatever Damn. you had? Well, well, yeah, I mean, because I was drinking vodka, which was flavorless, you know, I mean, sure. vodka on the rocks, which was easy. And then um, I wanted to slow down. So I, I tried everything. I didn't like scotch. Okay. Uh, Do you know? Because you know, back then, most scotches were 80 proof. And so they were very sure. thin. Everything was chill filtered, you yep. know. Uh, and yeah, I liked the, and, and But yeah, when I was drinking Four Roses... But again, it wasn't like oh neat. I would have it with like a little like a splash of water and an ice cube or something like that, you know. Sure. Uh, do you drink any scotches now? He only drinks his no. Ice. I don't drink anything. Yeah. No one should ever drink anything oh, except oh, smoke bag and bourbon. See, this is I have a question now. You never ventured if, in a scotch. If, listen, someday, let's say that you're uh, you're you you know you get the new situation figured out. Sick. I've had Scott. Oh, I I uh, did an event with Compass Box and I tried all those. They they had some good. Uh, I like, oh, okay. I like okay. So I was gonna say what the, that kind of answers my question. But what I was gonna say was, if you go to like, uh, okay, like let's say your bar opens up, right? Mm-hmm. And then we come down and we come and hang out. And we're like, we brought this bottle whiskey all the way from Michigan, and we just want you to try it. Like, are you like, I'm not mm-hmm. fucking drinking. It's not mine. Or are you like, I'll taste it and see. I- Oh no, I'll try it. Okay. Cause I like, I just I just don't drink that much anymore. Sure, sure. You know, and, and so when I do, I'm either doing tasting it's notes perfect. for the for uncut or like yeah, even like you know, it was all last week. Or you know, because I'm in the distillery trying right. stuff and I come home and I don't really want to drink. Um or if I like I said when I was going out, it was to do account support and things like that. Sure. So it's not like uh oh, that. Right. I don't right, want right. to try anything else. Yeah. Um, but it is tough since you know it's me and I'm fucking blending this shit to taste exactly the way I want. Right. And then I try something else and it's not, you know, it might be good, yeah. but this is like dialed into my sure, that makes sense. Yeah. Jackie Zykin talked about that and was like, I am so used to tasting all of our shit that I look for differences in barrels and like I, I'm in tune to that flavor profile for a reason. Like I'm looking for outliers on that stuff. So when I drink other things, I'm I'm tasting those outliers because I'm like I can't enjoy something else because Did it's she like say that yeah motherfucker. She she was I've like said so many times I don't know why Jackie only drinks her own product. I didn't know when he oh. you, you literally just explained that and I thought holy shit somebody finally explained why a distiller would drink only drink their own product. No, nope. no idea. Because it's the whole process of trying to blend something sure. that you're trying to get to one flavor profile right. that when you drink something else, you're like, whoa, that's so off the wall. Yeah, on- I would that. make this. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. That's the first time it's been explained to me. To me. 
Not the first time it's been explained. I get that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the information was out there. You yeah. were just ignorant to it. And I like Jackie. Yeah. I'm actually a fan. So I, I, I just miss it apparently, but yeah. No, I mean, I get that. Do you ever worry? Okay. And probably not. I mean, I can't wait for this. Worry? No, no, no. I, I can't hey. wait for this. It was preface. Hold just, on. When he does shit do like ever, this. <laughs> do you ever worry that you missed out on a release that you would have loved? Of like somebody else's like bourbon? Like bourbon or whiskey, any, any yeah. anything in the whiskey world, we'll say. No. See, I like that mindset a lot. I wish I could adopt a champion that. mindset. Well, you know what it is? It's like you don't have the FOMO issue, mm-hmm. right? Not with not with consumables, right? Oh, we do. The problem is, <laughs> yeah, is fucking... we have the FOMO issue, and then open everything, and then we can't fucking drink it all. Literally, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. Uh, guns, yeah, there's shit that Dude, I I'm fucking wish I bought because I'd have We're it in. still. Fair. Let's go. And I yeah. get to use it until I died, and now you can't <laughs> fucking find them. Sure, you that's know? Fair. like that's bur- fair. bourbon, or it's like, oh, hey, are you sad you missed out on that limited edition fucking you know Hagen Dazs ice cream, <laughs> or that you know, no, it's cool. <laughs> I mean, okay. put it in the Hold freezer, on. and then again, now you made me feel it, like it's gone. <laughs> he just went. Your limited edition bourbon is pretty much like ice cream to me. I don't give a fuck. Wait, let's talk about what well, guns. See, I mean, look, I have limited edition bourbon. I mean, right, it's like right, drink right. it, you know. I'm gonna right. make more. Uh, I mean, yeah, the barrels are special. Sure. I, I mean, and I do drink those very slowly. I mean, I, I probably I have I have almost every loose bottle I ever brought home. Uh, but honestly, I mean, I'm really in the mood for them. I'm almost 90% in the mood for uncut and filtered or small batch because they're so complex. Sure. Uh, and even, you know, I've got the rare and limited here, and I'll drink it from time to time. But, man, when I drink uncut and filtered, it's like, fuck yes. Yeah. This is why I'm alive. <laughs> do, you have, do you have a favorite? Shit. You, you smoke, you seemingly smoke cigars often, right? I, I it comes and goes, you know. Okay. Like I'll smoke smoke one every day and then take a week off or sure. whatever. It's all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a difference with cigars. You know, it's not. You're not like craving nicotine. It's all emotional. Like how you, sure. yeah, how right. You feel. I, I to my father. Oh, you did. Yeah, he was like, all right, you smoke. You 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 want that cigarette? Are you talking about cigarettes? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And it was like a cigar. I can go a week and just not give a single F about smoking a cigar. I go on phase. Yeah. But I'll phases. also smoke two in a day and be right. like, oh, that was a good day. I like that, yeah. 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 They're for sure days. Well, there, there was a time where I was only smoking full body, like high nicotine cigars. And like, uh, oh my God. I started like craving these. them. What's yeah, that? I started um, craving yeah. them. And I, uh, I stopped for a week <laughs> and like reset my palate and started sure. smoking like. Late, later that one LFD that Alex said he smoked. Well, and... okay, so LFD is just a brand. Oh, is it the one yeah. LFD where they're like it's the fucking inch ring gauge and takes like four hours and <laughs> it's almost like ha ha ha. Can you smoke this? So you want to do it? I know, like Rocky Patel makes like a super Lajero. Lajero is the most, oh, yeah. the highest nicotine content in, in Leafs, I believe. Hopefully, Alex in here. He L- can... L- all LFDs that I've ever had. And I love LFD, but a lot of LFDs are higher nicotine. Content. Double Ogero, yeah. So those uh, two thousand series, the classic ones, aren't too bad. So there's a there's a LFD, and I, th- I think it's called like somebody in chat can correct me, something like about a volcano. I fucking love that cigar. I think it's La Volcano or something like that. Listen, okay. it's not fun. I, you know what? The name wasn't right. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's all that matters. Um, well, I want to talk about guns. So. Yep. <laughs> uh are you into handguns like rifles? What are we talking? Oh, Alan just commented and said the digger and the airbender. The airbender I think fucked that, me up one time. Uh, <laughs> literally. Uh, all right. I like them all equally. Okay. I would say that as far as shooting, um, ever since I got these short range steel targets and I have a bunch of them, yeah. all all I want to shoot is like big bore short shorter barrel uh okay. rifles it's just so fun because when you're shooting like uh, well handguns are cool i don't know it just, just depends on my mood really sure like because i i've got like reactive targets and um okay. you know you, they, you shoot plates off of them so you got to reset them and you got to concentrate and everything yeah. and uh sometimes i'm in the mood for that you know that's all handgun stuff and then sometimes i just want to run around the desert doing mag dumps and the <laughs> 
fucking <laughs> short range steel targets. <laughs> fucking dirt <laughs> flying <laughs> everywhere. Fucking dirt was like, yeah, I well, I, I haven't shot any of that in a while, but like you know, when you could get supersonic three hundred blackout for like forty five cents a round, I shot a lot of that. Uh, I mean, the subsonic stuff's cool because you can shoot a target rated, uh, a, a pistol rated target at like seven, right. eight, you know, seven, ten yards. And that's fucking fun because it's, it's rocking that steel, you know. Right. And then the short, the short range stuff, because it's short range. I mean, it's fucking thick and it's angled a certain way, and it doesn't make that ding, 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 you know, that you you get from shooting steel. But when you're shooting with three hundred eight or a seven six two by thirty nine, or even supersonic three and a blackout, I mean, this shit's fucking moving and the dirt's <laughs> flying, and you can tell you're hitting it. Like I was out shooting. Oh fuck! It was it was just yesterday. With like five, five, six, and I was actually, even though there's no recoil, I was shooting slower because I was like trying to figure out if I fucking hit the thing or not. It's just like, <laughs> you know? I used to, like, a bunch of people in chat are talking about how they can't find ammo and shit. And I know that it's, I, I suppose James tells me it's a fucking nightmare. It's an election about. year. It you you can year. find it, it's just expensive. Okay. Uh, I used I mean, to reload like, ammo, and that was four like, years. It reloading you can't ammo. Even find primers. Good luck finding primers right now. Are you serious? That's gone. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess it makes sense if ammo's expensive. Prime more. People you had that reload. little troll workshop in your basement, bro. It was. I had a fucking was like a five press. Oh okay? my god! I, I wish you would have smoked back in the day. That place would have oh, been a sweat shop. It was my basement. It <laughs> yeah. would not have been a sweat. My wife would have murdered but, me. Yeah. But yeah, like some shit, like three in a blackout, you cannot find. Okay. I mean, I saw some online recently. It was the first time I've seen it for it was like two to two bucks around. Oh god. You know? That's it's outrageous. all like the specialty shit. It's all like the hunting stuff, like oh, the Remax. Blackout's it's, expensive. Any like I mean, not like that expensive. Yeah, I mean, normally expensive. Well, sub, yeah, Subsonic right. stuff was like a dollar around even before shit. all this, you know. Holy shit. So okay, how shit, do you I have a not six? How so. do you feel about nineteen eleven? Freedom. I love them. I'm old. Let's old Dude, guys. We love those nineteen eleven. So at one point I, I go through phases with guns and ownership of them, right? So I always own at least a couple guns, but the ownership of which guns I own <laughs> is what is what rotates, right? So right. I owned an FNP forty five tactical, and I fucking love that gun. That was you should have kept. I, I used to uh, the the FNX. Is it, yeah. So the, there's an X and a P. One's a smaller. One's a smaller frame. Yours was dual stack. You had the FNX. I think the X is single set. The, fi the 15 uh, round? Spencer? The, the, I'm yeah. not sure. It's a P or X. I can't remember. I thought the FNX is the dual stack. So The let, FNX let, is the dual stack. Okay, so I have an FNX. Yep. Then, or I had an FNX. So I have that, and I loved that gun so much. Yeah. And it was... The fucking probably honestly, realistically, the best handgun I ever owned. Dude, that was a polymer gun that shot like a steel frame. And it was heavy as fuck with bullets in it. Yeah. Because it held so many 45 ACPs. <laughs> so <laughs> that's so much go fuck yourself but, in one handgun. But when it came down to it, I was like looking at guns and I wasn't shooting as much. And I had owned three 1911s. And I'm like, I gotta keep the 1911. There's mm -hmm. there's something about a gun that's been only slightly, barely touched. For literally like 110 years now, that's yeah. fucking incredible. Yeah. Like, the yeah, fact I mean, the frame you know, for, for, shit. for for de for defensive stuff, it's like, oh, you know, I mean, right. maybe if he was in California, sure. but uh, <laughs> sure. but then good luck using it in California. You'll probably get fucking sued. You might as well throw and, it at uh, him. <laughs> yeah, and, but um, they're just they're so beautiful to shoot. The nice they ones. Yeah. I mean, they're so ergonomic. They're like the most ergonomic handgun. They're they're all. I always have fun shooting them. I mean, I don't have any with a red dot because it's kind of like, you know, it's like um, be, before HK brought in the uh, the MP5. You know, you could buy those Zenith ones. The the, the Turkish made ones are made on HK, okay. uh, like real HK stuff. Okay. And you, it had like a claw mounted optic rail, but I know I just always use iron sights because like it's, it's like. It's like driving an old car, you know? People are like, oh, you're going to put an LS motor in it? I'm like, no, I'm not going to put a fucking LS motor in it. I want to feel like I'm driving an old car. Yeah, right, and right. So, and so, like, in 1911, it's, you know, it's 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 like a different experience using – I fucking – I never use iron sights on anything anymore. Right. All of my ha modern handguns have red dots. 
And so it's just cool, you know, and it's like, you know, it's, it's just fun. Well, it's, uh, I, sorry, I'll stop with it. Yeah, we were uh, plinking at my brother's like last summer and I have an MP shield and I'm shooting with that. And we were like going with it. So he brings out his uh, Ruger SR 1911. I was like, all right, this is not fair. I have a three inch barrel and you have a six inch barrel. One of those is a carry gun. The other one yeah. is not necessary. Yeah. Gun. One yeah. I carry and then I beat you to death with the five pounds that's still in my hand. <laughs> like, Dude, we're good here. That's, well, a, that's the home defense tactic for the 1911 is you missed every, you missed <laughs> only, you only get seven or eight shots, right? Depending on your magazine. Yeah. Well, you well, missed all of them. Fuck it. You got a literally a bat in your yeah. hand. <laughs> Cause we well, used to, yeah, the, the whole thing, the reason why everybody, it's all about nine millimeters is that, that uh, FBI um, ballistics report came out, right? And so the, right, right, right. the, the fundamental difference between a, a, a rifle caliber, you know, moving between like 2,000 and 3,000 feet per second mm -hmm. versus a pistol caliber that's, ne you know, not achieving those speeds is... Bullet balloon. Well, it, it's all about how many holes you can poke in someone. Because unless it's moving at like two thousand feet per second, it's not going to drop somebody. Because um, so there's a there's a when you when you're moving at two thousand feet per second, it creates this huge vacuum in your tissue that slams shut, and that causes the person to fall down. Oh shit! Um, okay. and, so and so even, yeah, yeah, and so the the whole thing, like you know, because when three fifty seven Sig came out, they're trying to replicate three fifty seven Magnum, and they they don't even think 357, the whole thing about 357 Magnum, it's all psychological. When you shoot somebody with a 357 Magnum, it's fucking loud. And there's a huge muzzle flash, and it's almost like a flashbang. And so it's a psychological thing where when you get shot, you know you've been shot. Like when you're shooting somebody with a 9 millimeter, it's, they don't, but, it's less but so now, Man. yeah. So, and also with like modern. <laughs> Dude, modern holy powders shit. and and modern you know bullets like as far as like I, the yeah. underwood ammo like so the nine millimeter you know for most people um, is definitely you know fi you know if you're in a defensive situation you're under stress it's def you know uh, you know a more practical caliber but sometimes it's just it's fucking fun nice factor. To, yeah fun, yeah fun you're factor. in the desert shooting targets there's fun Dude. factor I yeah. shooting steel with a nine millimeter is fucking boring. Right. And it's easy. I feel like I'm cheating, especially like a full <laughs> frame, like or, or these competition guns with fucking compensators and everything. You're just like, right. doo, 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 doo. like, oh, cool. But like, like doing it with, you know, doing it with a 357 Sig or right. a, a 1911 or something, you know, or or any double stacked 45, and the steel's rocking. Right. It's moving. It's making noise. You know. And it's like, you know shooting a dueling tree and you knock one of those fuckers off when you shoot it with a, with a you know 45 i win because it's now well i used to shoot with really, nine millimeters like beep, beep. right there used to be a show on history called top shot dude in that show Solid. there was a really good reason that that show when they use handguns use ridiculous handguns right yeah. they have yeah. like a less than 500 and they have a desert eagle and they have 45s and they have 1911s and they have all these like big calibers because they're fun to watch and they're more, they're louder and they're more yeah. visceral, right? When you're watching yeah. them. So for fun factor's sake, man, and there's some, there's just something and everybody in chat knows I'm not really into history. It's not really my thing. Not my forte. Now we know. Well, you, you don't, yeah. You don't have to be all tactical all the time, you know? Right. There's just that 1911. The fact that somebody made something, bro, I, I honestly don't, I can't name another thing. That's made 110 years ago. That's the same today. You know how they won the military contract for that? No. They kept firing it until it was red hot, would dump it into a bucket of water, pick it back up, and, shoot it. and then keep shooting it until it was and red it hot. Worked. And they would drop it back in the water, pick it back up, keep shooting it. It's such a cool, it's such a cool thing. Very man. robust. But yeah, I mean, and everything has the browning action, except for like, you know, Berettas and a, a few others, but it's like ninety percent of your self-loading handguns have that Browning action, mm -hmm. right? It's time and time proven. It's just such We're, a cool thing. Yeah, Hundred years now. <laughs> um, yeah, our buddy who was in chat earlier, our like our in-person buddy, 
He's a big, he's got a 300 blackout AR and it is my so absolute fun. fun, like my favorite fun gun. That's to shoot. a fun, fun I don't gun. know what oh, it shoot, is about it. Just shooting that. 300 blackout subsonic suppressed. It's like fucking, it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I've not had that experience. Nope. One time we had this idea to uh, take off ear protection and shoot a 1911. And that felt a little bit like I you would assume how a flashbang. Every fucking movie is fake ever. <laughs> yeah. When you watch them oh. shoot a handgun in a house and they're like geez, 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 moving around, shoot a handgun once or like your are fucking... like, what the fuck? Yeah, shooting in a car with no hearing protection. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> and then just having like, a normal conversation. Like a yeah. rifle, shooting a rifle in a car. With no yeah. hearing protection? I mean, the concussive force bouncing around in there? Dude, right. it feels like Andre the Giant just fucking clapped <laughs> your head and you're like, oh, okay. Oh, it was great. Woo! It was so good. It was good so on that. Fun. All right. Okay, before we get off here, I want to talk about cigars just for a little bit. And then if okay. you have to go, let us know. But, um, I do. Oh, yeah, it's eight. I got to eat soon. Yeah, you said you didn't have dinner, so yeah. I don't want to keep you too long. But um, so – cigars when you're into it when you're doing it do you have go-tos or do you just kind of whatever you're finding or what do you do with that man that's a tough one um i do have some go-tos uh and then you know i i go to this uh jason the manager of the fry brothers cigar box i just i always ask him if there's anything he knows my palate if there's anything i'd like and okay and, and he hooks me up and so now people are like what do you smoke I'm like, i don't know <laughs> I, I've gotten better because I used to just smoke stuff and save the bands if I liked sure. to do it. I would like yeah. more of these, and you know now, uh, so I never knew what the fuck I was smoking. Um, what? Yeah, so um, I really like the uh, the new as far as new ones, the Illusioni Epernee ten year yep. anniversary. I love those. Um, as far as my go tos, I'd say right now the Tabernacles are in there. Oh. I really like those new Fonsecas that, you know, uh, I still have like old Fonsecas from like fucking 15 years ago. Okay. But, um, you know, uh, uh, my father's bought out the, bought the name, bought the Fonseca. Oh, from I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah so th those are really nice. Those are beautiful. Um, the Illusionis, I can't remember what they're called. They're the big ones with the blue band with white, uh, lettering on them. Uh, I like the warps. I like the uh, almost all oh, the work. I just got a warped. Um, holy shit! It's got teal writing on the band. Teal writing with gold back, like a gold like weird Underlay. ass background. Oh my gosh! It was great. It was a oh, warp. I I know that's the shit you said. Airbender, a uh, cloud hopper, I, or it might be the hacienda one. It's okay, either the hacienda or the cloud hopper. Those. Okay. Um, I, I think the that hacienda. Was fantastic. Uh. What else? Like, uh, you know, the, um, fuck, man, I can't remember all of them. There's more. I know there is. Uh, the Tatuajes. I love Tatuajes. Um, tatuajes. Are Dude, he's walking a fine line between both of us really well. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a, I'm a really big Illusione and, and Tatuaje fan, like huge. Yeah. And when you said Tabernacle, that, that hits a lot of my boxes. Sean's, Sean's dream. I it's so funny, too, because, man, people... So the the you don't put you gotta don't put any ice in your bourbon. See, those guys are out there with cigars. You know, oh my like, you need to smoke a real cigar. Oh, oh do I? I? <laughs> what what dictates a real cigar that right. costs more than the one I'm smoking? Because right. I like this one. I don't need to spend forty fucking dollars. Or you need to smoke <laughs> yeah. Cubans. I've got yeah. some Cubans for you. Oh, do you? Make sure it's like three fucking so boxes, okay? Right. Maybe we'll get fifteen out of those three boxes. <laughs> They aren't plugged and right. don't smoke like shit. Right. Because yeah. there's no fucking quality control in Cuba. Everybody left. They all took yeah. their fucking seeds and they moved. Yep. And they're not there. They're yeah, like in the there. Dominican yeah. Republic and Nicaragua right. and yep. all these other places. And so, yeah, Cubans are great when they smoke well. But fuck, to go through all that hassle to like right. get like five good ones out of a box. Well, no. and, so, uh, and the the whole Cuban thing is such a overhyped thing. Yeah, because like we had Cubans, and it was like, listen, man, they're good, but I've had better cigars. Like, yeah, every Cuban we've ever had was like, oh man, that's a great coffee cigar. 
they're all just good they're so chill. mild they're like good nicotine they're, they're high okay. they're high nicotine yeah low smooth smooth they're very yeah. smooth yeah. i think the first cubans we had kicked our ass yeah, because the of the first nicotine yeah. it was like i need gummy bears staff <laughs> i'm dying sure <laughs> yeah the, it's just that's a that's a olvias those olvias man they make me nauseous i can't smoke them well and that's like you mentioned earlier like some of the cigar people we talk about this there's a guy named jeremy sires and and he's super into cigars and really into whiskey and we talk to he does a lot of cigar content on youtube and he we were talking to him about it and he goes you guys get a bunch of people who get pissed at you and you like light a cigar and it's not a cedar stick or some shit mm-hmm. and it's like i listen, I don't have the time to light something to light something else, right? <laughs> I just want to light the one thing I want and I'm moving on. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, you got to get the cedar stick. Oh, my gosh. It's like the amount of snobbery. It, it, it's it's, it's the same. I smoke most of my cigars outside. There's only like fucking 10 days a year so I could light something with a match here. And right. It's always yeah. windy here, you know? Right. Like those exactly. really calm summer days when i can use a match i'm like oh yeah match this is so cool right. it's like fucking kind of lightest no i'm not lighting any cedar sticks right so and my matches a- aren't cedar either oh, right come yeah, to find out fine. yeah have you had a uh, uh drew estate liga t52 no. it would have like a it'd be a dark wrapper with a white band and with a lion on it and it'd say t52 in blue writing I don't believe so. If you haven't had it. one and enjoy the tabernacles, they're all right. Okay, mm. it's right up the same alley. You'd really enjoy it. They're all right. Oh, and I like the Guardian of the Farm. Those I like those What's too. That? I don't know that I've one. I've heard of that one. Got the dog on it, the little pit bull on it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, I only found out about them because they did a uh, collaboration of sorts with Warp. It turns out the collaboration was Warp dictated the size oh okay you know, little yep. boy yeah it's quite you know but whatever they were really right. good and so that turned me on to them okay i know like a lot of the um collaborations and cigars well what did alex say of course aaron shops at the one store in vegas that doesn't care <laughs> okay so alec bradley <laughs> the stream, and uh you know actually, what actually if you look at the bottom of the the, the chat yeah okay alec bradley. so alec in chat is alec rubin who is the alec of alec bradley right so uh he said that's the one store in vegas that doesn't carry their cigars now here's the thing it's probably because Alec went there and said some dumb shit and pissed him off. Realistically, right? That's what we- <laughs> I can find out. I can. Ask All right, I'm on here. Oh <laughs> uh, no! So, um, Agnor, Agnorsa, Agnoros, Agnorsa, Ag- Agnorsa. <laughs> it's Agnorsa. Anyways, uh, so one of the things okay. that if you haven't gotten, hopefully you'll get in in the mail here pretty soon. A couple days. We um, sent you care package. Hopefully it's already there, but if it's not. Oh, it's, it's there. Oh, perfect. Okay, it's good. got a picture. That's okay. for you guys. So one of the things in there is a new, re- newer, I think it's the newest release from Alec Bradley. It's the Project 40 Maduro oh. wrappers. Okay. And so they kicked off and they did like this new series called the Project 40s, which are, I, I don't have a, I don't love them. I don't hate them. They're just like, for me, they're a completely neutral cigar, right? The Project 40 Maduro I smoked one the other day, and I'm like, "Holy shit, this thing's amazing!" Okay, but that's like also the American Sun Grown Maduro, dude. Have you Where had a like, Project Maduro rat? Yeah, no, I exactly. haven't. So you relax. have had them. So relax. <laughs> so here's what happened. <laughs> I had a Project Forty Maduro, and I'm like, "This is a fucking amazing eight dollar cigar, right?" Mm-hmm. So then I go online and look them up. They're five fifty to six <laughs> bucks, and I th- I literally immediately went. This is immediately, this is my new value cigar period. Man. Okay. This is it. It's fucking amazing. It goes with coffee. It goes with whiskey. It goes with nothing. El it's fucking Santa awesome, Mom. dude. There's a bunch in there. I'll me. tell you, my, my coffee cigar is a little tiny LFD 2000 box press. I don't, okay. I don't, I, I love those. I got to um, try. I don't think I've had a bunch of LFDs and I don't think I've had that one. It's the old one. You know, okay. it's kind of like, it's like all these things. I mean, sometimes they change, right? Like, uh, I was smoking an OG San Cristobal, and man, I mean, it's been aging for fucking, I don't know, a decade, but it was so good. And I went, I was like, oh, man, I had an OG San Cristobal. 
I want to, and and he was like, they're not the same. They don't taste the way they did back sure. then, you know. Yeah. And so, uh, it, yeah. So you never know what's going to happen. I mean that that stuff changes a lot. That's it's like whiskey in the in the fact that the blends change, right? The sourcing changes. What like yeah. different crop changes different, year to year. The blender changes. Yeah. Different parts of things change, and then what you find, or they started mass producing and they weren't before, right? Something. Yeah. So, I, I mean, look, it, it's like, it, uh, for example, as I love uh, VCOGs as far as a variable, low power variable optic. I mean, they're kind of expensive. They're only one to six now, which is outdated, but um, they're super rugged. I don't have to fucking get rings or anything, but sure. you never see anybody using them. Now you do because they just came out with the one to eight and the fucking Marines are using it. But the reason you never see anybody using it is because it's been around for like, who's going to do a fucking review on it? Who's right. gonna show off their new build with like? Because everybody's got the, right. you gotta have the newest shit, you know what right. I mean? So it's like it's, it's kind of like same with cigars or some of these other things where something's been around forever, right. and you're like, oh, I don't know if I know that one. It's like, yeah, because it's not the it's not the new one. It's like yeah. you know the one that's. And then also now all the new ones, like if you go back and try that one, or I can't remember the other what like the original one was. They're so low nicotine. You know, LFDs have sort of earned the reputation of being like. Can you handle this? You want to sure. die? <laughs> yeah, and, and these are not like that. They've got some nicotine in them, but any you're not you, you're not gonna fucking puke your guts out and like right. fall over or anything, right. you know. And yeah. they only come in narrow ring gauges. Everybody's smoking those fucking stupid big dumb ring gauges now. And Dude, a nice a nice Lancero Corona ring gauge somewhere in that range is such a fucking yeah. fantastic forty thing. to forty eight. Oh, about it. So uh, we'll end it here. Red, white, and boosted real quick. Said, who else remembers when Aaron took down half the BSM <laughs> pages? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want, I want this We to, were on board. I want this to happened. be known. I heard what happened, and I said, fucking right, dude. I'm happy you did it. So We have kicked people out of our Facebook group yeah. because of I love, I, this I didn't, The thing is, it's like I didn't, I didn't even report anybody, you know, um, yeah, I was fucking pissed, man. Selling hey, those ba- those bottles. We were on I, your I side. Personally, I personally, if if we ever do a giveaway on this channel, and we didn't even make it, so it's not even yeah. our product, right? right? So that adds a whole other layer of complexity to the situation. But if we do a giveaway on this channel, we and, do and like we a see barrel it on pick fucking it, secondary. Then well, the I, I have the same fucking problem that you. The same. Well, especially this one. This one is the one that I said specifically. Right. If you yeah. want to win, you have to agree that you're not going to sell it, right? And that you're only going to share it, you know. Yep. And uh, yeah, man, if I'm in are, BRM. You know what? I've seen that guy blasted if, everywhere. Listen, <laughs> if people if people go and buy something, they do what they do. It is yeah. what it is. They bought it from a store, whatever. I, you know, yeah. I, I'm not saying. Yeah, I do it, it, it's that, awesome, exactly. But, like people send, and that's the thing. People send me stuff all the time. Like I, I don't want to. I don't even want to know it exists. You know, because it's right. like I'm. A it, DSP holding supplier, yep, and these yep. people are conducting, you know. Well, let's be real. It's like, like when COVID started, and people were going to like Dick Sporting Good and buying all the weights. And then there were pictures of people selling weights on Facebook. On Mark- fucking eBay. Yeah. Yes. The picture yeah. of their truck bed. It was like, cool, <laughs> thanks, man. I know you just, li- I can still see or the toilet truck. paper. People were yeah. selling toilet paper on eBay. Yeah. Right. Well, the, the problem for me. The the it it just the major problem for me enters when let's be completely fucking honest. We know we not maybe not in person, maybe we haven't talked to them. I, I you. know of a lot of craft distilleries, and none of them are doing cool shit and giving away any of their limited releases, period. No. Right? No. So when when somebody and like you said, I don't know if you're labeled craft or not, I don't I don't know the correct term, right? But for lack of a better I term, I don't know, yeah. When a cool ass fucking distillery gives away a limited product and and has two stipulations like fucking comment on the video or whatever it was and then just drink it, just be cool, man, bro. These are not hard yeah. rules to follow, you know. And I yeah. said it pretty fucking clear. So yeah. for me, I'm 100 percent on board with, hey, don't be the fucking guy, you know. And yeah, that's all yeah. it is. And and unfortunately, there was a guy, right? And that in and it, in my opinion, well, you, you know, you know, the worst part is the guy that won it is not the guy that was selling it. The guy that won it, not only did he sell a bottle he knew he shouldn't have sold, he set his friend up and fed him to the wolves. That's kind of pussy and, shit. 
That's sorry. hilarious. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> like, hey, I'm not gonna sell it, but this guy oh, yeah. is. Oh, yeah. So, so the guy, and then the guy, because he reached out to me, and like, he was like, he watched the videos and he saw, he was like, oh fuck, you gave these away over Christmas for COVID, because you know, help people out and everything. Yeah, and uh, uh-huh. he's like, I didn't even know about your brand really, and now I'm an asshole. Yeah, and, uh, you know, right. and so, but yeah, the guy selling was asshole. I mean, the other thing too is, you know, uh. Well, Instagram took the post down, um, but you know it's like uh, they, it's just, like one of one of the guy like I talked about it in a live. It's like somebody showed me a screenshot and said, "Oh shit, this is a banned bottle." Aaron's gonna fucking lose his shit when he finds out about this, and he did. And, and, and so they they took it off. Sure. The thing was like, well, why are you guys tell me now? Right. Yeah. The whole reason everybody knows this is a band bottle. Right. Everybody knows it. And the whole thing is the reason I was going to, you know, people are like, why would you do it? Because like, they let it happen. But they didn't let it happen. So I ended up like editing the thing, saying, you know, mentioning the group oh, or whatever, but it was still in the picture. But because um, the group did make an effort to stop it and like oh, they okay. kicked the guy out even before I did anything. And uh, so it's like, well, just oh. fucking. I mean, I, and people were like, well, why don't you reach out to administrators? Why don't I, a DSP holding supplier, reach out to administrator of a group that's conducting right. illegal activities that I'm sort of federally obligated to report? I right. don't know. Right. I'm going to try to not do anything <laughs> like that, actually. Hey, hey detective. Yeah, I kind of don't want to know you. about this shit and like right. let everybody live their lives and do their thing. And right. it's really not appropriate for me to contact that like an administrator but, and even like the people that reached out to me weren't administrators so like that, so it, and the thing was like when the bans happened they were you know out, like out of respect for the brand but whatever it's like you know and even like somebody when it, when it was in the heat of it someone's like oh you destroyed you i was like i didn't do anything i know how these groups work Right. Even if I did report them, they're going to move over to their fucking yes. back. I'll up. see you all tomorrow on this different page. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's 42 like, still exists. Yeah. Everybody relax. I'll see you yeah. at 44. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, and, but like, but Matt, it, was, it was. Go ahead. Sorry, it was buddy. an interesting experiment to sort of. Because initially I didn't think there'd be any controversy. Right. And then when and then there kind of was, but not really. And the craziest thing was what I was talking about earlier is people are like, I don't understand what's going on. What's a private Facebook group? What's secondary? Mm-hmm. What, and, like, and then, you know, you're getting these messages. All these people are like, your brand is done. Right. You are done. It's over for you. And it's like, there's really nothing going on, actually. <laughs> yeah. It's well, not- the, the- <laughs> like, hey, man, that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the problem with it is, dude, it just comes back to, you were doing a cool fucking thing, right? Yeah. That right. what the problem is, it didn't start with a guy going out on his own and doing some like purchasing something with his money. Right. I, I feel like there's so much loss in the fact in my head, the only way there's controversy is is if they don't fucking understand that that bottle was gifted to him in a giveaway for a good I, and for a good I ball, did a right? video and it, yeah, and I said you're agreeing to this, and if you do this, this is what I'm gonna do. Right. And you know, and the, and the thing was, it's like, is you know, by the way, the memes were amazing, and I shared them and loved all the of them. One, the Karen, the one's Karen one was, uh, yeah, it was fucking hilarious. But but the you know, talking about the Karen thing, it's like a Karen is like somebody going around waving their finger, going, "You right. didn't follow the rules, and now right. you're gonna be." That's not what this was. This was you gave me your fucking word. Yeah, we had an agreement, yeah. a bond, and you fucking broke it. Right. I'm gonna fuck your shit up. Right. It's not like you need it. It's like if I find you, I'm gonna fucking beat the fucking shit out of you. <laughs> so you know, in. it's I'm not so like you, you do. Dan wants like, the address. You call me right now. Please <laughs> hey, hey, let me know. I'll be up coming. You know, I'm yeah. So, so it's not like a, it's not like a finger waving. It's like we as men or, yeah. or whatever. Or it was like a semi social contract about it. Yeah, like we had an agreement and this. understanding. And you took advantage of me, yeah. you know, and also it's like, I'm doing something good here. It, it, yeah. it is largesse to give these things away and the whole, and you're taking advantage of it and, you know, fuck you. Yep. So it's not yeah. rules. It's, 
Dude, it's I darker. It's Listen, darker than uh, that. We're we're sitting we're here a hundred percent on board. I'm so fucking when we when it happened, we talked about it on a live stream, I think, because it happened like a Monday or a Tuesday. We live streamed that night. Mm-hmm. And and it, it got brought up. I think it was a Tuesday because Hot Buttery Rolls live stream right before us and talked about it. Oh, so, yeah, I saw yeah. his, yeah. And so afterwards, it was like, no, because the problem is, is, is what's happening is the 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 situation was laid out, right? Yeah. And then what happened was is somebody decided to capitalize on it and ignore the fucking situation and ignore yeah. what the fuck was supposed it to was, happen. It was, hey, here's a good thing. Right. Let's be cool about it. You all you got to do cool. is fucking Mother drink sucker. it. Yeah. Like, that's all we oh, want. No, no. I gave them away my six packs. Right. So that you could share it. Right. Yeah. Like, maybe yeah. somebody um, ha- was having a hard time because of, of COVID. Like, they lost their job or right. whatever. Yeah. And so they couldn't afford Christmas or, or you know, ho- presents <laughs> for the holidays. Give them away. Share them with your friends. Yeah. You can give them whoever you want. You just cannot fucking sell it. You know? Excuse like, me. That, yeah, I didn't give people six packs so they'd sit there and fucking drink a whole six pack of it. And, you yeah, know, <laughs> it, 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 fair. <laughs> You're like, it, hey, I'm not trying to help you with your your alcohol. Your yeah, yeah. yeah but, it's the holidays. We've all had it's the end of a fucked up year. Yeah, I'm sharing with you. Like, let's spread the love right. here. You know, I, and, and I so, make whiskey what it's supposed to be uh, a gathering experience type deal. Yeah. Like, let's yeah, cheers and, to love. and it was, and it was a fuck you to like fucking retailers and the hype of the batch number one. Yep. It's like if you guys are gonna fucking overcharge for something, I'll just give it away. Right. I'll just yep. fucking get I don't give a shit. This is not the backbone of my business. You right. know, these 44 cases or whatever. Right. It's like I there there's there's a whole thing that comes with you doing something fucking cool and, and someone and, taking and advantage listen, of it. Realistically, man, this is the shittiest part is the asshole became the loudest, right? So you gave away however 44, whatever you just said, right? Oh Two, no, I I I only gave away probably four cases. Okay. So you gave uh, away I saw I, so that's another thing too, right? I saw people trading them on secondary and I didn't I didn't as much as it pissed me off, I didn't blast them but that's sure. when i stopped giving those away right well then, i saw people trading this, them and then when i saw someone selling it it was like well like i've seen you coming out of the years i've seen you give away a lot of stuff right like yeah. right like the opportunity to get things and be, yeah. and being around your instagram and seeing that often at you least guys are often. ruining it for everyone but the problem is is you have done this however many times now with however many cases or bottles or whatever it happens to be right yeah. And everybody's been fucking chill. Yeah. Everybody's been cool. And then one dickhead has to go and be an actual dickhead. And, yep. and it, it's yeah. unfortunate, but what hap- it, what seemingly happens in every circle or platform or community or whatever, some asshole has to go and fuck everything up. And then it fucks 100%. up for a bunch of other people, right? Unfortunately. And well, it, I'm, it I'm going to stop doing giveaways. I'm just not going to give away six packs of, you know, I even just right, gave away yeah. the special batch, small batch batch. But we put late, you know. Sure. Now they're ugly. Now we're putting stickers on them that you can't get off. And so sure. if you want to have a nice pretty bottle, well, you can't because right. it's got a big fucking I drew a dick on this on it. Good luck. Right. <laughs> I, I don't make know, it more. I, I'm happy. I think it's cool as shit. That, I think it's cool as shit what you did with the giveaway. What? Yeah, what you're doing is cool. Yeah. Everything about it was great. Yeah, fuck that guy. What kind of came of that issue was stupid. Yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah. I'm in. It was, it was disappointing, yeah. right, you know. Zachary Jones says, I would sell it. Sean was, oh, you would sell it? Hell no. <laughs> no, I'd drink them all. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd start stealing Sean's out of his basement. And she'd be like, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Aaron sent it to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I Let me know. Uh, you know, I'll open hand slap that man for you, too. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I don't know who the original guy was. Oh, I even told the other guy, like, you don't have to tell me. Just well, whatever. I think I, I don't person I don't I don't think there's any controversy. I just don't think there's fucking any. So I appreciate oh, it was over in a in a day. Right. Yeah. But like I said, it was it was interesting because there was a moment there where I was trying where I was reading the tea leaves and the and you know and then uh I was like, Oh yeah, never mind. This is right. this this But it was weird. You really see the true nature of some people though. Some people. 
And the shitty part yeah. is it makes you feel it just you, you know like it makes you feel guarded and shitty about there, some yeah. Stuff, but, but, I mean, there are well, those people in every group, man. W- w- once again, the overall response was super positive, and it, right. and, yeah, and the, the bourbon community was like it's just showing that right. the real bourbon community is just a wonderful group of supportive yeah. people. I mean. I, when I've had health issues, I get nicer fucking direct messages from people I've never even met. Right. Then I get from like <laughs> followers on my personal Instagram that are like right. I've been friends with for ten years. You know what I right. mean? Yeah. It's like it, it, it's an awesome group group of people on yeah. all. And um and so that it was cool. For, yeah, you're doing cool I would shit. Say it, was, it, cool. it was overwhelmingly positive. Yeah. Well, okay, so. On that note, before we right before we wrap it up, do you know of any online retailers that stock or sell your product that people that it's not distributed not to in the, the state, states, yeah, might be able to find it? Out? Uh, well, Sealbacks and and okay. West Dupont, uh, I think Prov's prices should be reasonable now. Okay, um, and uh, and then we're getting set up with Barcart, and so Barcart will okay. use all eleven states as. Uh, so they, 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 you know, because no one can ship to all fifty states, right? But certain places can ship to certain states, mm-hmm. and so. But the most important part is, even though it's not direct, is I dictate what the retail price is. Okay. So there will be no gouging. Oh, that's amazing! That's super yeah. fucking cool. All right. Okay. So for everybody in chat who asked earlier, if you can buy it online, there you go. Yeah. Aaron, thank you for being on here, buddy. Is there anything else you of want? Of course. To- yeah. Anything I want to say? Yeah. Yeah. I just fucking appreciate everyone. It's amazing. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without them. And <laughs> uh, yeah, it's fucking awesome. It's, a, you know, it's cool. Sounds good, man. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, for sure. uh, it's been a, of course. to talk to you about everything. Uh, whiskey to firearms to Cigar. assholes <laughs> and cigars and heads, just a yeah. little bit of everything. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's been a very My pleasure. Nice Thanks for thing. having me. Yeah. yeah. Hey, all right. Everybody, thank you guys for being here tonight. Well, the cat's fucking up here now. So thank you guys <laughs> for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for all the support and super chats. Yeah. See you guys on Thursday. See you guys then. All right. Gosh.